Why is that? Did I, did I get it? Oh, that's okay. Did you get it? B? Yes, sir. I got it. Okay. Uh, I'd like to call the administrative conference to order for June 23rd, 2014. Uh, Mr. Samuel, you give us a word of prayer. Absolutely. Let us pray. Preacher's uh, brother. <laughs> preacher's son. Oh, your dad, but your preacher brother too, huh? That, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Father God, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for your blessings. Father God, we thank you for lying down last night and rising up today in a land that's free. We do not take that for granted as we look around the world. So much chaos in so many places, so much anarchy in so many places, so much unrest in so many places. Here in America, we found a way to address our concerns in civil ways and in civil manners. And we just don't take that for granted. Thank you. and ask you to continue to bless this great country of ours. We lift up, Father God, our great city. We lift up the mayor of this city. We lift up the members of this council, all of our families. We lift up our employees, the persons who go out there and make this thing work every day. Let us not take them for granted. Let us not take their, their, their families for granted. And then, Father God, we lift up our citizens, the persons who we have been elected to serve in this city. Help us to always be mindful that we need to make those decisions that are in their best interest. Help each member of this council, before we push the yes or no button up here, to think about the impact it has on our citizens because we are their voices, we are their minds. In many, many ways, Father God, we are, we are the difference between what be successful to them, successful to them, and what may not be successful to them. Thank you, oh God, for all that you do for us on a daily basis, both seen and unseen. We just thank you for all that you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Jeff? Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, Tom, you can see this is a very important meeting. We got Oliver Jenkins with a, uh, with a, with a tie on and a new suit. <laughs> so you know, this is, this is a very important meeting. Okay, uh, Madam Clerk. Here. Mr. Everson? Here. Mr. Oliver Jenkins? Present. Mr. Corbin? Here. Mr. Webb? Here. Mr. Shine? Present. Mr. Sam Jenkins? Present. Tomorrow at this time, I will entertain a motion for the approval of the minutes of the administrative conference Monday, June 9th, 2014, City Council meeting, Tuesday, June 10th. Uh, Mr. Standing in for the mayor. <laughs> uh, no communications at this time, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, communications uh, from council members. Ms. McCullough, we'll start with you and we'll come down the line. I don't have any, Mr. Sherman. Okay. That's what I don't want All right. <coughs> I'll, yeah. I'll save it for later. <laughs> Good. I, I just one. I want to know why I was the only city councilman at the Gentleman's Cooking Classic this weekend. I didn't right. see anybody else out there. I don't know what the story was. Just I think Sam was at the Good Time Roll Festival. Well, <laughs> I have an answer to his question. If <laughs> I, 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 I know Sam wasn't there. <laughs> when he, when we heard he that doing. he was down there cooking, yeah, I know all of us Sam decided does. to stay away. <laughs> <laughs> I want to make sure it's clear that my son was doing the cooking. I was helping him oh, to serve it. Had we known that. <laughs> Could have been different. That was my only comment. I think Art was at the Good Time Roll Festival too, did his no, son, he was his son is a good cook. <laughs> uh, oh. He, he oh, came he by and sampled sure, for his wow. namesake. Arthur is named after Arthur. Oh, okay. <laughs> wow. There, there, you see that? He's stroking on already. <laughs> watch, <laughs> watch when he come in at the end for the report. <laughs> he going to get after him. All right. Let's see, Mr. Chairman. Uh, if, if it's appropriate. I'd like to try to recognize uh, Lieutenant Colonel Reginald Williams. Thanks, 
to please come forward. Okay. At this time, uh, he had wanted to share some information with the please. council. Please. With the council, rather, uh, maybe an experience that he had, and maybe some ideas he wanted to share with us about, is it the property standards, maybe property standards ordinance? Yes, sir. You please come forward and give us your name and address. Can you hear, what, what is Ms. Farnell? She's in the back, but I can get it. Oh, okay. I did it. I'll make sure she point gets out it. that he was here. Okay. Sir? All right, thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Reginald T. Williams, and I'm sorry, what other information did you need? Address. Address is 6246 Southcrest Drive in Shreveport, Louisiana. Yeah, it's, it's, you have the floor. Okay, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, Councilman Jenkins, and uh, Council members. I briefly just wanted to uh, address a safety issue that uh, my parents experienced. Uh, earlier this month, we had a large tree from an adjudicated lot to follow my parents' property and cause a couple of thousand dollars worth of damage. Now, we didn't know that the tree was likely to fall a couple of years ago. Uh, it was leaning at a 45 degree angle and it had become uprooted. Now, the problem was uh, when we asked the city to look into it, it was a it was a catch-22, really. One department could only deal with fallen trees. Another department could deal with a standing tree, but only if it was going to impact a right-of-way or, or a public street. Basically, the only thing we could do was wait for the tree to fall, cause a bunch of damage, and then recover. Now, the tree did fall, as I said. It did cause damage, and the city has removed the tree. Um, they've agreed to uh, cover the cost as well, which we appreciate. But my main concern was the, the tree was so large had my parents been in the yard, I don't think they would have made it out. Uh, my parents are in their 80s. They don't move like they used to. So I wanted to see if the council would consider some type of ordinance or some type of rule that would allow the city to remove a tree that's in jeopardy of falling, uh, even though it may not impact it right away, if it can be independently verified that this tree uh, would, would cause some damage. So that's basically the, the gist of my story and my proposal. And, and Mr. Chairman, I had uh, told uh, Mr. Williams, I believe he emailed me some information on it. I will get it to the council staff and to Ms. Glass, who is uh, advisor for the council. Uh, we always have to look at the legalities and the policy considerations that would be involved. With it. Also, to make sure we get it to uh, the CEO for the city, because we always have to look at the uh, legalities, the policy considerations things like that that would be involved in decisions such as this before we can move forward any kind of uh, legislation. But I know everybody up here certainly uh, feel your concern that, uh, you know, there can be dangerous situations that, that have to be addressed and maybe need to be addressed in a more timely situation than what occurred here uh, in this case. I do know I followed it pretty closely. I know Ms. Brunel worked very feverishly to uh, try to address the situation. And, uh, Hopefully, maybe it's something we can look at. I, I really don't know right now. So I certainly appreciate you coming down and expressing your concern. And just know we will follow up on it and try to give you some feedback. Okay, sir? Yes, sir. We appreciate it. So, let me ask, what did you do in the Marines? Uh, well, I'm still in. I'm in the uh, Reserves. Oh. But uh, I started off in the infantry with a unit here when it used to be in Shreveport. And uh, now I'm attached to uh, New Orleans. Oh, great. But do you live here in Shreveport? Or are you the uh, yes, sir. Right. I live in Shreveport. Gotcha. Right. He's a Lieutenant Colonel, retired United States Marine Corps. Right. Yeah, I'm, I'm a lot older than he is. You see that, so. I said retired. <laughs> if you don't mind, how old are you? <laughs> That's okay. We might be the same age. <laughs> well, but now you, you can rest assured that he always throw that in our face. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. We will give you some follow-up on it. Uh, I have the email. I'll you know, send it around for everybody to take a look at it. We'll get back to you and kind of let you know some status one way or the other. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for thank coming you. down. Appreciate it. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank and you, Council. parents members. are some thank very you. fine people, some very nice people, some of the nicest people you ever want to meet. And uh, you know when I stop by to check on them, it's iced tea and everything else you can name. So <laughs> very nice people. Don't complain about much of anything, but uh, they are people who are very outstanding <laughs> citizens uh, in our community. So be sure to let them know all the council members said hello. Yes, sir, I sure will. I remember also uh, Councilman Shine um, 
did a recognition at my father's retirement at St. Res, Dr. Ernest Williams. That's right. So, yeah, that, all right. That's exactly right. Yes, right. We appreciate that. And thank you all very and, much. And, um, uh, matter of fact, when you see Ernest, you tell him you saw his brother here. Because he <laughs> and I always be brothers. And I know you know what I'm talking about. Absolutely. All right. We'll all right. always be brothers. Okay. But now, just one other thing. Yes, sir. Uh, just uh, uh, make sure your mother be a little careful when she feed him, when she give him some iced tea, because he might want to just come on there. Anytime it's hot. Y'all don't want to Always welcome. <laughs> thank you, man. All right, thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, at this point, if the council doesn't mind it, uh, I want to suspend the rules and bring up Mr. Sanders. He has a case with uh, Nicky's. I think they want to hurry back. They might have some guests coming this evening to Nicky's, and they want to get back so they can take care of them. Uh, I'd like to move that we would suspend the rules. Second. Okay, it's been moved by the chair, second by Councilman Jeff Everson. All in favor vote yes, opposed is no. All right. Um, Carpo, would you please? Good afternoon. Today we're going to handle an ABO liquor permit appeal case for Nikki 6721 Clug Pines. And like most of the ones we have in this one, they exceeded the number of violations permitted by law. Go ahead and read them in the record. First one, the offense was 130-2013. Mr. Powell, underage sales, pled guilty 5-21-2013. Next one, 2-27-2014, Mr. Candelas, no ABO card, pled guilty 4-22-2014. And the last one, Robert Vargas, 2-27-14, pled guilty on 4-8-2014. Um, prior to that, the last violation they received was in 2006. So it's not one of our, um, what we call problem businesses. It's just that um, they had a, a bad year. We had three violations on them. How many questions? This is our right, club pies. That, that's District G. Okay. First. Can I just ask, okay. And this is just for me, because every time I come to it, I get a little confused. No ABO card. Does that mean no ABO card on person or? This one's no ABO card, period. Period. Right. And they, it didn't expire. They just didn't have it in their employees. Service. Well, if it's expired, it's the same as no ABO card. I can look back at the report, say for sure, but basically they did not have an ABO card, a okay. valid ABO card. Okay. And I think really just for me personally going forward, if you could put a little parenthesis behind it either not on purpose or expired just be a, in my mind if they're hiring people that don't have abo cards and have never had an abo card that means one thing different levels of management oversight in my and i'd Understand. like to make sure that was clear to me when i review it i'll thank make you. note of that next time okay thank you any other questions sam well the uh do you gentlemen wish to speak on this subject at all Yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> Cody Mayo, 820 Jordan Street for the uh, for the company. I represent Mr. Uh, Elias Safentes. I've represented him for a number of years. Uh, he's been in business in Shreveport for over 35 years. I've probably <coughs> represented him for about 25 of those 35. This particular location has 85 employees. It's open seven days a week. They did have these these three incidences. They involved Mr. Tyrone Powell. He's a 10-year employee. He's a bartender, and he may he served somebody underage. <clears throat> he was ticketed in January of 13. He paid his fine, and he's still employed there. Uh, the second one there is uh, <clears throat> Mr. Candelis, Andre uh, Andre Candelis. Uh, he was uh, he was uh, cited on uh, 227. A 14 pled guilty paid his fine he was charged with no abo card but <clears throat> he was one of those guys that had an expired abo card he is the manager of the company and he allowed his abo card to or the manager of the location the day manager and he allowed his abo card to expire the third uh, individual is robert vargas uh mr vargas uh, had no abo card he has been he was a 15-year employee and had been in the kitchen and had kitchen duties for all those years uh, he had been promoted out and just started as a server he did not have an ABO card as a result of the citation he was dismissed um, 
some weeks later, uh, due to the hardship involved with uh, uh, Mr. Vargas, his family, his long employment, he was rehired and he's been reassigned to the kitchen. Uh, certainly, these, uh, this uh, denial and appeal has gotten Mr. Savinta's uh, attention, and he has uh, uh, enacted programs and uh, policies to make sure that uh, there's complete compliance with the law between uh, going forth with. So I would ask that the um, City Council grant his application. And Mr. Savinta is here, along with uh, one of his uh, uh, suppliers. And can testify or give you information about his business if the council wishes to hear about it. Well, I, I think it got a, a very good business over there. Uh, I think it running very well. Uh, I've been in the area a number of times. And, uh, quite surprised to even see that we have something here because you appear to run a very tight ship from what I can see. Uh, let me just ask this question here now. On the, uh, you said there's some policies and procedures that's been put in place to try to curtail these products. Could you give us just a, maybe a couple of particular Yes, sir. I'm going to have, I, I have Mr. Savinti's okay. address that if you would like. Right. Just tell us a few things that you may be doing a little differently to make sure we're not running into you want to that? a repeat situation. Go ahead. Good afternoon. My name is Chuck Sanders, 2105 Chase Cove in Shreveport, Louisiana. Uh, basically what we've done is implemented an action plan on a monthly basis so we can review the dates of expiration on all the ABO cards. I mean, it, you know, Pines Road is just one of his facilities, and they have, I believe you said, 85 employees there. Uh, he's got one, well, y'all know where all the Nickies are around town, and employs several employees, and it's, it's going to be a task, but we're willing to do that so we don't have this issue anymore. Do, do any other members of the council have that kind of question? Yeah, let me say this before you make the motion. Uh, I'd like to see Mr. Robert, uh, is it Vargas, uh, promoted back. I mean, if he uh, if he was promoted out of the kitchen and nobody told him that he needed a, a ABO card, You know, I hate to see somebody lose some money. I'm glad that y'all hide it back uh, because, you know, I feel like a situation like that should have been held by the administration. If you promote them out, say, hey, Robert, you need to get your ABO card. And if nobody told him, he probably, he might not have even known. So, uh, if I can address that, if if uh, if he can obtain an ABO card, we've had that discussion, and I'm, I have. Um, I believe he could um, uh, be promoted back okay. to server status uh, if, he, if he can ob obtain the card. Right. Well, he should be able to obtain it. All right, Sam. Uh, did anyone else have? I, I'd like to make a motion uh, to overturn the denial, do a six month uh, probationary period. If something should arise, a violation should arise of any kind, bring it back before the council during that six month period. Other than that, try to carry on. I think you're doing a great job over there. Uh, you're hiring a lot of people. I think you run a nice business over there. So uh, just try to carry on, do the best you can. It's been moved by Councilman Sam Jenkins, second by Councilwoman. I'm sorry. Did you, we'll Carper? Did you want to come up and say something? Okay. I've been second by Councilwoman Rose McCullough. Uh, Mr. Clerk, did you get the motion? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, it will be for a period of six months probation. Am I right? That's correct. Okay. Uh, any questions or discussion at this point again from anybody? If not, it's time to vote. All in favor vote yes. Vote is no. Uh, with the seven more vote, uh, uh, Mr. Jenkins, your motion was passed. Mr. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Hold on just one minute. Hold on. I believe the motion is to grant it for one year with a six month probation. Okay. Yes. Was that was that what it was? Right. Okay. The, right. the clerk has it. All uh, right. Yes. Hold on just one other. I, I, I didn't have any questions for them. I just oh, okay. was going to ask if we could go ahead and take the other case. That would be fine with me if it's all right with Corporal Collins. Next one is tab two. 
That's going to be now saved 12 404 Burke Coons. Had a manager here. Once again, exceed the number of violations. First one is 8 5 2012. Marion Mitchell, Noibio card on person, pled guilty on 10 23 2012. Next one, 6 5 2013. Tia Rankins, underage sales, pled guilty on 10 18 2013. Next one, 10 19 2013. Annie Kennedy, underage sales, pled guilty on 1 5 2014. With this one, you also have two pending. Um, you're supposed to go to court on the 17th. Um, it's continued to arraignment on the 23rd, so that hasn't changed at all. Those are strictly pending. So the only thing you'll be basing your decision on is those three I listed first. Can I ask a question? Yes. Is this a liquor store or is this a convenience store? Convenience store. It's the one on the corner of Glenwood and Burt Coons, the Shell Station, I believe it's Shell. Yeah. Okay. And it, that's in your area. I, I, I know that one. Yeah. Is it my district or is it in your it's district? Not, it's yeah, I was thinking it was actually, it's, I think it's when everything changes, it's going to yeah. it's a line anyway. But, yeah. uh, um, I, uh, go ahead. No, I'd just like to hear what procedures you put in place to correct this. Okay. Yeah. If I might it. interrupt before you say anything, if you don't mind, I would like to say that I went out and visited with him he called and asked me if i would come out and talk to him he thought i was the representative of the district and i just i i went and uh we had a great conversation and i, I let him speak and then uh i'll tell you what I, my thoughts were but you shouldn't your district but <laughs> okay we'll work go ahead you know, respect to chairman and city council members my name is manjit singh 2834 long lake drive we have this uh, business since 2005, nine years. And uh, in nine years, we really only have these violations. And the, it's a gas station. We serve breakfast, lunch, dinner. We open 24 hours. But I really accept all these mistakes. And then uh, right now, I talk to Mr. Collins. And I'm putting uh, scanners there right now. And then I'm making a policy signed by all the employees and putting on the wall that uh, if ever they have another violation, they be fired. Anything else, uh, if I'm asked, I'm willing to do anything, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Witt. I was just going to say, I know one of the things that he mentioned to me when I went out to visit him was... Uh, he was short-handed that day and he had somebody from the kitchen come up and work the register but there once again like i told him you should get all your employees an abo card because they may be called to sell the alcohol and i recommended he he get the scanner and i thought maybe you know the council may have mercy with a probation for six months and but i know it, it is a large part of his business but a lot of a lot of uh you know complaints here and, and but uh, anyway I'll just uh, huh. this really doesn't have anything to do with the ABO card but um, I'm acquainted with Mr. Singh um, in other businesses and um, he's been noted to run a pretty tight ship you know when it comes to conducting business so um, I trust that he's going to do what he's uh, saying that he's going to do in lieu of uh, his employee and this, uh, you know, uh, ABO card. So um, hopefully we would take under consideration to give him an opportunity uh, to proceed with his business. Councilman Webb, thank you for. Uh, yeah the visit and your comments and uh, I feel I think the same way that you do uh, Mr. Chairman I would make a motion that we override for the one uh, with the six month probation again uh, I'm, glad, I'm glad that you are uh, looking forward uh, to correcting these problems yes, and, and with the scanners yes. and I think one of the things that helps is, is a long, long track record yes thank you sir thank you Okay, it's been moved by Councilman Carbon, second by Councilman Ron Webb. Mr. Thompson, did you get the motion? Yes, sir. It's the same as the last one. Okay. Is that the, is that the motion the same as the last one? 
Okay. <laughs> okay. I was just waiting until Mr. Thompson, I can get that smile on Mr. Thompson's face. Okay. It passes with a 7 0 vote. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Corporal, I have a couple questions for you. Yeah. Cool. Hey, let me, let me just ask, and I've, you know, I've been here for now <coughs> three plus years, and I should have asked this a long time ago. But in terms of fines in regards to these deals, so when any of these instances that we see here, like you're charged with this and you plead guilty and pay a fine, I'm assuming when you plead guilty they pay fines, don't Correct. they? Correct. Generally. But the what is the level of those fines, roughly? Um, usually right around $150. It's supposed to be a minimum of $300 on a underage sales, <clears throat> but normally it's 150 plus court cuts, which is 154.50. So slightly over $300 for an underage sales violation. ABO cards are usually a little bit less, anywhere from like 50 to 100. Depends on their record also, the judge may hit a little bit harder. You know, it's up to a $500 fine is what they could be charged with and 60 days in jail. I haven't seen that. And then the owner of the business though is not fined at all? He could be fined. Um, allowing to work with no ABO card, that's usually the owner of the business. Gotcha. So if somebody, so in the instance of the previous one where the gentleman who was in the kitchen came out didn't get an ABO card, potentially the business could be fined for that. Exactly. And that's up to discretion of the vice sergeant when they go out there and find a violation. Okay. And as far as you pay for your renewal and then if you are not granted one and you appeal, is there a fee for that appeal? No. I mean, like other, obviously, when you appeal some of the other And there's addi actually additional costs for the police department because um, if we offer them a site-specific, which a lot of times we offer site-specific, you know, we have to prepare that letter, send to them. If they don't bring that back in time, then we deny. That's a registered letter itself that gets sent out, so there's money involved. So with these appeals, there's always money involved for the police department, extra money involved for them to appeal it. Okay, and I'm just saying that if y'all came up with some type of way to, you know, evaluate that cost incurred by the process, I'd be interested in seeing it. And I, I don't necessarily saying the process is broken right now, but for all the appeals that we see in front of us, and I, I think there's a different level between shutting down somebody in their primary business and making them get their attention. And I think there's probably middle ground that we could move towards that. And I don't mean today is any right. different than any other. It's just from being here, if y'all came up with a way that, you know, to cost that out, I'd be certainly receptive of looking at a proposal. We'll look at it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's move back into our regular agenda. Ms. Farnell. Is she still out? Malcolm, would you take, please? Thanks. Uh, Mr. Harris. Would you come forward just for a minute while we're waiting on Ms. Farnell? And Mr. Sip, now on. Now, property standards is a little bit of a different animal because. Stand move too slow. Yeah. <laughs> now, come on up to Stan. Stan, I want both of y'all up. What? what you going to invite me up? I appreciate it. Dale. Yes, sir. Over on. Uh, uh, yes, sir, you're going to need to pull your cap off if you plan to stay. There you go. That's my man. Uh, I don't know whether it's Hope or Peabody, but it's the street that comes down from the police station in front of the, the Methodist Church over there. What which, is it? Which side do you mean? That's, that's Hope, I'm Hope saying. is on the west side. It's on the 1500 block. I think uh, Hope it's side. on the 1500 block of Peabody across from Peabody. Me. Okay, then. Oh, okay. houses. How many people have right. That? It's uh, 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 the Methodists having a conference, and they're looking for about 2,500 people to come in, and uh, there's some trash out there, Mr. Sibley, and it would make the city look bad. It, you know, it's not a whole lot, mm -hmm. but we need to put both out, tight, you know, especially when we got a conference coming in. And the conference is going to be for about five or six days, and I was hoping that 
uh, the two of them could maybe Wednesday uh, could maybe get a truck out there and get somebody with a lawnmower or a weed eater and just kind of down that street just kind of shape it up a little bit so they're coming in this weekend for the conference right i, I normally would know that but right. that's st james I, that's from my, from i know mistake, st james yeah. methodist yeah i know and and it it goes to show you he had he hadn't been going to church <laughs> <laughs> is this is this we, this coming wednesday yeah Council i believe this is coming wednesday when they yeah. kind of wanted to get that spread of it there i would appreciate it if you we'll check all the all the public areas around here and it, and it might and you know I just thought about now it might be a few little other things around in there which we'll you know they're gonna be they'll be parking all around and then people will be walking and and we want to at least kind of put forth because uh, we want those people to come back and buy some clothes or, uh, I almost say go to the boat but you know those are church folks so I ain't going Methodist though yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> I got one for Mr. Harris also. All right. Fireworks. Uh, Mr. Harris, I'm catching a lot of heat about the corner of Carondelet and Curtis Lane. I was just the right away yesterday. It's overgrown and the uh, right here, right. drainage that's ditch that's, uh, I think somebody put some leaves or something down there. It's kind of backed up. Mm. So you can get somebody to go by and take a look at it for us right there at the corner of Carondelet and uh, Curtis Lane. I appreciate it, sir. Hey, Mr. Chairman, if I may, uh, yeah. Mr. Harris, uh, you see, see my question. Who, whose responsibility is it to, on Baird Road, right in front of uh, Chase Wood subdivision, when you're coming out of Chase Wood, if you look across the street where the ditch is right there, mm -hmm. I mean, like the homeowners are saying, I ain't cleaning out this ditch, and it's just growing into a big mess. And, uh, is that his responsibility or our responsibility? I have to take a look at it and see. Yeah. If it's in the public right away, it, it yeah. still falls I mean, It was horrible. Okay, this is at Baird? Yeah, it's on Baird Road, right right as you come out of Chasewood subdivision. Okay. Just directly across the street in the ditch. Okay. We'll take a look at that. Okay. And also, uh, uh, I don't know whether it's your department or not, but behind the Valor Row, uh, on your way down Baird Road to uh, Ridgewood Junior High School, I right away between that, you know, it's woods right there behind the Valor Road, which is on the corner of uh, Burt Coons and Baird Road. Okay. And then, uh, but our right away hasn't been taken care of. It just looks absolutely horrible. That's Dark your guys. We need to go look at it also. Yeah. That's Burt Coons and. Okay. <coughs> we'll take a look at those. Yes, sir, before you go. Okay. <laughs> As I understand it, you met with Miss Virginia oh, Evans and a uh, group of citizens on her city, Wilson, did you, concerning? Yeah, we talked with her uh, and the, the mowing, you mean? Or? Yeah, she was concerned about the cities right away. Did you ever get a chance to look at that? Yeah, we actually cut all that, took care of that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right, thank you. Okay, any more questions? I have some for Ms. Farnell. Proceed. Actually, one of my constituents are here. Mr. Hawkins, is it? I think he's here to express uh, some words of gratitude to Councilman Oliver Jenkins as well as uh, property standards. If it's okay, can we have him to come forward, uh, Councilman Shine, regarding an issue that uh, we voted on? I think it was June in the June 11th, June 12th meeting. Sure. Ms. Farnell was absent, I believe. Uh, but Are you okay. sure it's not Sam Jenkins instead of Oliver Jenkins? Because Oliver has uh, you a You know, tendency Sam Jenkins don't look out for District A like Oliver Jenkins does. Wow. Wow. Okay, okay. Treading okay. relatively uh, hey. cautiously at this point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ah, Sam. It, it was Oliver. That could mean a lot of Mr. things. Mr. Hawkins. That's right. You, you wanted to speak oh, uh, regarding, uh, you want to tell him what it was regarding. I'll speak 
Yeah, why well, Miss Farnell is here. Well, I'm saying the top this one. one. The top one? I want to move it over. Just push it down. You just got to pull it down. Oh, you talking this one? That's good. Oh, you got me out, so. Oh, yeah, that worked. <laughs> name and address. Oh, my name is Thaddeus Hawkins. I'm, I live in 650 Kingridge Place in the Hyde Park subdivision. But I'd like to thank you, Ms. McCullough. Oh, really? Yeah, and i also like to thank you, Mr. Oliver Jenkins. Uh, you kind of in sync with what I was doing, even though I hadn't met you. Okay. So that, I want to thank you for that. Now, uh, I had talked with this uh, Ms. Farnell about my property at 3040 Skelly Street and I was asking that we do another 60 days. I should have it all completed by then. Let me let me explain. We, we voted to demolish this property and it was actually property that you inquired about uh, Councilman Jenkins. And I don't know if you all recall, I, I requested his contact information uh, in order to get in touch with him. And um, so I did, in getting in touch with him, he had his dates mixed up. And we had an opportunity to actually review the properties. And even when I reviewed the properties, it appeared as if though the properties were open. But in talking with him, the opening at the very back of the house was not the door opening. It was an opening whereby the hot water tank was kept. So the house was actually secured. That's what I'm trying to say. And uh, of course, we voted to have it demolished because it wasn't secured. And so, you, as a result of the conversation with you, it sounds like you well, talked to Well, I fixed that door on the hot water heater. On the I, hot where the hot it, water. It's up. And I replaced some of the bolts. May, may I speak, please? So he says that he spoke with you. So that's why I wanted him to come today. Okay, Mr. Shine. Yes. Uh, since the council made a decision on this on June the 9th, this is technically a request for reconsideration. Uh, in order to reconsider under our rules, you would have to suspend the rules. Uh, and in this case, I don't believe that anything has occurred uh, of substance since the decision was, was rendered. And I don't think that there would be a problem in doing it, but it, it will be a reconsideration of a decision that the council made on June the uh, on uh, June the 9th. Wouldn't we have to have a request by the council person in that district for a reconsideration? Uh, a motion to suspend the rules and reconsider would be in order. Okay. I'd like to make a motion if it's proper at this time to suspend the rules for uh, reconsideration. Second. It, it's been moved by Councilwoman McCullough and second by Councilman Sam Jenkins, uh, or was it Oliver Jenkins? It uh, doesn't matter to me one way or the other. I just want to make sure it's in our, is it in, do we have it in That's our books? Skelly no. Street, yeah. is it still in there, Ms. Farnell? Yeah. No, it's not. Okay. It's not a correct. But actually every room, every window was secured with the exception of the back, which we thought it was the back door. But it was actually where the hot water tank was kept. I recall the case also. I think we had some reservations about uh, yeah, demolition. moving forward with a demolition. Right. Because we wasn't sure if he knew to be here or not. It sounded like you said that's exactly what the situation was. If I recall the I photographs to, at that time, I the only I opening was at where the, this uh, hot water tank was. Uh, which I assumed okay. was the back door. Right. So I agreed, well, if it's, if it's insecure, then there's no telling what would happen from <coughs> this point on. But in talking with him. Mr. Chairman, um, I believe that the reason that he wasn't here, he said he received the letter, but he misread the letter the date that he was supposed to be here. Uh, there are two actions that I guess, several actions that the council could take. One would be to allow it to be reconsidered and set it for a hearing at another date, a subsequent date. Or, but I believe that Mrs. Uh, Burnell is ready to make a uh, recommendation if the council is ready to to reconsider it and to act on it now. Could I, could we just hear from Ms. Farnell just for a minute or two and then we will move uh, after we hear from you. Thank you, uh, Councilman Sean. I am ready to make a recommendation on this structure if you would like to hear what uh, my recommendation is and uh, we could vote on it or your choice of uh, Yeah, make your recommendation and, we, and then we'll let 
Okay. My, my recommendation is um, 3040 Skelly. At this point, there, um, the permit that Mr. Hawkins has has expired. So number one, he has to get a permit. That's it. He has to uh, paint the house, replace the seals, and secure it in 60 days. I'm requesting that the care premise that exists must be done in 10 days. That is my recommendation. Okay, Ms. McCullough, days? you heard a recommendation. You how many have days is that? I didn't do the math. Okay, it's a total of 60 days. Okay. 10 days to abate the care of premise and 60 days to paint it, complete the replacement of the seals and securing it. And in order for him to do this, he must get a permit because the one that he had expired March the 15th. So he must have a permit to do this work. Mr. Hawkins, do you do you hear that? Do yes. you understand that? Yes. Okay. Well, I had even misread that because I didn't put the permit up on the building. I kept it in my car. Okay. Move uh, for sixty days. Yeah. That, that's, yeah. That's Second. Mr. Chair. Well, hold on. Hold, hold on. Now. I don't right. believe the motion to uh, suspend the rules was ever voted on. Right. No. It, it, it was that's not. It. So this, I'm, I'm just trying to get. Okay. Let's move to suspend the rules and so move. Second. It's been moved by Councilwoman McCullough to suspend the rules, and it's been seconded by Councilman Oliver Jenkins and Sam Jenkins. So, uh, all in favor, vote yes. Opposed, no. The rules have been suspended. Uh, now, you you want to make a motion, motion for to reconsideration? Give him a Sixty days. With the ten day. That's seventy, really, isn't it? No, it's not. That ten days included in the sixty. Oh, okay. I think you'll okay. need huh? another motion to reconsider. reconsider. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So uh, move. To, to reconsider. reconsider. Yes, I'll sir. second it. Okay, it's been seconded by Councilman Oliver Jenkins. Uh, Sam, did you want to be part of this? <laughs> <laughs> if not, all in favor, vote oh, yes. Of course, it's no. Now we will reconsider. Uh, I've been case. invited in this time. Right, what is what is the case now? Uh, um, he has. What? PSD 1300319. All right, Mr. Thompson, you got it now. Yes. Okay. Uh, no. uh, I believe Mr. Clark had a motion. Yeah. Yeah, for 60 days. And the 10 days. Included in the 60 days. Okay. Okay, but you, wanna, but, but you want to make sure you put all that in the motion. Yes, sir. He has to do one, two, and three. Uh, with a permit. Uh, B. Yes, sir. Does she need to read that again, or did you get it? Oh, I got it. Oh, okay then. Uh, all in favor, vote yes. Opposes no. Okay. Legislation passes with a 7-0 vote. Okay, we're ready to go. August 25th. August 25th. Now you will get a letter. Okay. And thank you again, uh, Councilman Jenkins, for bringing that to my attention because I was kind of spaced that day, kind of passive, and so I was kind of like going along with the property standards director at that moment. But I appreciate you looking out for my constituency. Anytime you invite me in the district, hey, I'm happy to help. Yeah. Right? I know not to just to introduce myself. Hey. Hey, that sounds like cooperation to me. Okay, any any more questions from Ms. Farnell? Okay. Ms. Farnell, I believe we're through. Thank you. Well, I should want to thank the council so for the yeah, vote. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Mr. Sibley, tomorrow. Uh, Ms. Scott, tomorrow. Where is Ms. Scott? Should be over there in the corner. Ms. Scott, we'll get you tomorrow on TV. Tomorrow, the first meeting of the month, so it'll be in July. You, you are exactly right. Um, just, you are exactly right. Could I ask her a sure, question? Sure, Ms. Ms. Scott, I just was going to ask you while, you, while we got you here. You sent an email over the weekend about um, a particular case that had had a decision. Do we have any numbers associated with that yet? or Just ballpark numbers. And, Council Members, the question relates to the email I sent you all over the weekend letting you know that uh, a lawsuit the city was involved in with Chesapeake that the Supreme, Louisiana Supreme Court denied 
um, Chesapeake and the Caddo Parish's uh, application for a writ. Consequently, the decision, the favorable decision that was made for the city at the Second Circuit Court of Appeals is now in effect. Um, that lawsuit involved uh, the city's being entitled to receive the royalty payments uh, from mineral leases that had been, um, that from the proceeds generated from uh, roadways that had been annexed into the city. The property was previously in the parish. The property was subsequently annexed into the city limits. And so the lawsuit was about who was literally entitled to receive the royalty payment that was generated from underneath that roadway. Um, right now, just ballparking, we think it's a little north of $60,000. We're trying to get some final numbers, however, and there may also be a possibility that there may be other royalty payments out there that we that were not a part of this lawsuit that we now need to look at because the law is now that the city would be entitled to those payments as well. So right now, perhaps a little north of 60 with the possibility of more. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You know he tried to talk about it over there. Okay. Where are we on this? Uh, Miss Sanders. Is Miss Sanders here? Yes, she is. Uh, Miss Sanders, if you want to, we'll wait and catch you on TV tomorrow. Sir, I have nothing to report. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't want that on oh, TV. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, she, <laughs> yeah, she, didn't, yeah, she didn't want that on right. TV. Huh? No, absolutely not. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, then. It's apparently somebody else I need to start looking out for and demanding some report. <laughs> oh, I want to start getting my list together now. <laughs> I see you're pointing at Art over there. Well, we know he always takes that first yeah. you know, right. deflection, but I need a list. I'm going to start right. noting it. Art, you see that, huh? Lord have mercy. Oh, oh again. We're right on the agenda. We give him a break. Everything so much, I don't know where we're at. Right back now, we're on the top of the second page. Uh, <laughs> okay. the top of the, number six, I believe. Mr. Sibley, I believe uh, you got us a public hearing for tomorrow. Uh, that's correct, uh, Mr. Chairman, and we will have presentations for those public hearings okay. from the administration. But those are just a redo of the ones we did before. Exactly. Mr. Thompson, uh, we'll have some legislation to be added tomorrow. Uh, Mr. Shan, uh, if it's not on the e-agenda, would you refresh? Uh, uh, there's a resolution to affirm and support Mayor Cedric B. Glover's request to Governor Bobby Jindal concerning the Harrelson landfill, a letter dated June the 19th, 2014, which is attached. Uh, and also, once you refresh, you'll see that uh, we've also attached the uh, a summary of the per of the uh, violations by Harrison since I believe '84. Uh, all of those were prepared by I believe uh, one of the attorneys for the city, and they are attached also. Okay, we'll be ready to add that for tomorrow. All right. It's by Mrs. McCullough. Okay. Uh, Mr. Sibley, did you have anything to add to that? Uh, uh, no, sir. I think Mr. Thompson laid it out very well. You think Mr. Thompson covered everything? I think he did, yes, sir. Well, actually, all of the attachments would explain everything, Councilman Sean. The violations and uh, all of that's attached to the actual agenda item along with the letter. I just wanted to give the administration an opportunity to come in and okay. have they say so. I have been accused uh, 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 Mr. Jenkins from time to time of maybe cutting a few people off and I never wanted to be accused of cutting Mr. Sibley off. Mr. <laughs> Sibley, if you think that Mr. Thompson has covered everything, I'll, I'll agree with you. Well, in terms of the logistics, I'm sure, you know, I, I think you said Ms. McCullough offered, I'm sure the mayor may have some comments tomorrow right. on the subject matter, but I'll defer to him on that. Thank you. Yes, Sorry sir. if I cut you off, Chairperson. No, you can, you know, I'll, I'll be quiet in a minute. <laughs> I understand. Uh, 
Okay, public comments. Uh, did I did I get a, a B? I don't think we have any. We have one, but it's for it's not over there. See, I got so much stuff over here into. Oh, I got it. 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 Uh, since we only have one, let me let me take it up right now. Miss Judy Smith, is Miss Smith here? Yes, she is. Where? Where? Coming. Okay. Forty two twenty Clingman Drive. Uh, in tabled legislation, it says ordinance number one seventy of twenty twelve, tabled in December of twenty twelve, amending and reenacting portions of chapter ninety of the Code of Ordinances resident, relative to residential parking permit zones and otherwise provide with respect thereto. And since I haven't read all of chapter 90 and I have a particular interest in residential parking, I would like to know how it will be amended and what will be the result that will be reenacted. It looks like it's going to be altered in some way. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'll happily either address the ordinance or this issue, but I believe 170 was proposed for parking stickers in certain parts of the city near bird high school if i'm not mistaken that is yeah. ordinance 170. so it, as it refers to your particular issue it has doesn't absolutely no, it. doesn't Thank involve you it very all. much okay and then the other thing just to let you know the the issue that you are interested in is been postponed till the last meeting in july which I believe it's the 23rd of July. Second. 22nd, I think. A long 20, way off. So a month from now. I can take a vacation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and thank you so much. Every time I hear this board, I am so encouraged. And I'm so thankful for every single one of you. And I hear your deliberations, and I hear your comments, and I hear your thoughts, I hear your prayers. And I'm so proud of you. You. We, you know, it would be great if you wrote that into the Times because we could use some positive <laughs> yeah. publicity for the, yeah. the, the city great council job. right no. now. But I'm just saying, no, you don't necessarily yeah. need that out there. You want to sound like a real Councilman Mike Carbon said you can repeat that again. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> That's my answer. It is? <laughs> okay, well, my, my, <laughs> just kidding. Us. Okay, I'll do that. <laughs> Mike's a man. I can I got the call. Uh, okay. Uh, no appointment, right? Uh, Correct, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Consent agenda. There, uh, there are no items to be introduced, but under adoption, sub B, resolution 104, authorizes Lee Ann Maranto at 1114 Lawrence Creek Drive to connect to the water and sewer system of the city of Shreveport. Mike. I do have a question about that, Mr. Sibley, and I don't know if Robert or Patrick can answer that question. I'm looking at the maps <laughs> and looks and it could be that the map that's attached is not completely current. This looks to be an, an area that is finishing out construction and, and we've just not annexed this yet because the construction's not finished. Is that correct? No, I believe this is one of the areas that was not was not annexed prior to construction and they're having to go lot to lot to get annexation agreements okay um but it will be i'm but, assuming it, but will, it will be, be. annexed as soon mm -hmm. as construction yes is complete yes sir. Uh, because looking at it i've got a satellite picture that i'm looking at as well and it's I, I don't know how old it is but there are a number of houses in that section on this satellite picture um on the map that's attached to the legislation we see a some blue lines which I guess are water mains yes sir um, at this point has the developer put a put water main in on the the complete circle there 
Yes, the, the water and sewers complete. Okay. So it loops, it makes a full loop around all those houses. It does. Okay. It okay. Just the map doesn't show it, is what yeah. you're saying. Okay. Okay. So I, I, I'm looking at the same map and it does not show it, but it is looped. Okay. Okay. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Thank you, Patrick. Okay, Mr. Sibley. Under Section 9, Regular Agenda Legislation Sub A, resolutions on second reading and final passage, or which will require only one reading, number 96, affirms the City of Shreveport's endorsement of Home Federal Bank to participate in the benefits of the Louisiana Restoration Tax Abatement Program. This matter is subject to a public hearing on tomorrow, as well as Resolution 97, which affirms the City of Shreveport's endorsement of Petroleum Building LLC to participate in the benefits of the Louisiana Restoration Tax Abatement Program. I think has, as has been indicated, these are technical corrections, but we will go through the process on tomorrow. Any questions? If not, proceed. Number 102 ratifies the use of certain equipment by Urban Support Agency. Any questions? If not, please proceed. Number 103 authorizes the mayor to execute a donation agreement between the City of Shreveport and Juniper Builders for the private water and sewer improvements for Long Lake Subdivision Unit Number 21. Right. Please proceed. Number 105 declares the city's interest in certain adjudicated property as surplus. Any questions? If not, please proceed. Number 106 declares the city's interest in certain adjudicated property as surplus. Yes. I think this is the one. No, I'm sorry, not this one. Please proceed. Number 107 rejects the bids received for IFB number 14-035. Any questions? If not, please proceed. Number 108 recognizes Taya, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, Scroggins or Scroggins Consultant LLC for being selected Minority Business Champion for 2014 by the Small Business Administration Louisiana Division. Oh, that should be wonderful. Any more? If not, proceed. Number 109 finds and determines the necessity and advisability of amending the Articles of Incorporation of the Industrial Development Board of the City of Shreveport, Louisiana, Incorporated, authorizing the amendment of said articles, approving the form of the amendment of said articles, and otherwise providing with respect thereto. Any questions? Yes. Okay. I'm certainly not against this. I just want to make it's pretty difficult to read what we are agreeing that. I mean, th basically, the document shows that this is the motions that the president of this board has proposed, but I'm not sure what is an amendment and what isn't, and I don't necessarily need to know the language, but globally, they're asking to extend their kind of reach, if you will, or what their area of responsibility is, right? Th that's correct, basically, uh, and we did ask representatives to be here on today or tomorrow, so we expect to be here tomorrow. But as I appreciate it, Mr. Jenkins, you're correct. What this is is an effort. Right now, that board, by its uh, organizing documents, is limited to the North Shreve Industrial Park. Uh, what we have learned is that there are other opportunities out there for economic development that have no board to cover them. For example, this particular, uh, one particular site that's interested is actually in Bossier Parish. Therefore, they cannot use the Caddo Industrial Board. So the idea is to expand the, the scope of the one board that the city has, which is the IDB, so that if there are other projects out there that could benefit from using the Industrial Development Board, then that opportunity will be there. Okay, and then, so that's the way I read the whole thing. Is there anything, I'll say, specific that we are agreeing to? And not with this legislation. We'll okay. confirm and be sure, but this legislation is intended to simply expand the scope of the board without any particular project being the, Okay, Correct. And that's what I just want to make, that's why I understood it. It wasn't very clear if we were agreeing to some specific activity. I don't believe we are. At some point, I think you told me they didn't even have enough people to have a quorum for a meeting at Correct. point. Correct. They have gotten filled out. They okay. are, they actually had a meeting within the past two weeks where they voted to bring this uh, bring this matter and forward. Okay. And as I said, we are trying to get them here for tomorrow so they can answer any specific questions. One of the things we've done, we've kind of advised them and worked with them, but they are an independent board, so we've been very reluctant to try and direct them or you know, get too heavy-handed with them. So uh, I don't want to speak out of turn, but that's my appreciation based on the meetings I've been in and based on the language that's been presented. So uh, hopefully they'll be here tomorrow and can answer any additional questions. But the legislation is not intended to endorse any specific project. And then, you know, if you have, a, if you do visit with them or you hear them or if they're listening, 
you know, I think certainly for me, maybe everybody else knows about this IDB, but I'd like a, just a broad overview of what their mission statement is and just walk us through the deal a little bit. Great. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Simply proceed, please. Section B, Introduction of Resolutions, not to be adopted prior to July 8th. There are none. Under Section C, Introduction of Ordinances, not to be adopted prior to July 8th, beginning with Ordinance 67. This amends the 2014 General Fund budget. This is regarding public works and involves uh, getting equipment for our street sweeping program, which will be outlined as a part of the overall anti-litter, illegal signs, cleaning up the city program. But we want to go ahead and get the equipment ordered to get it in as quickly as possible. I'll just say thank you. <laughs> okay. any, any more and comments? I was yeah. just going to mention, we um, Oliver and I both received some communication from Donna Curtis at Shreveport Green. Um, I don't know if she's shared the same communication with y'all. They actually have a meeting set for tomorrow. Good. Okay, good. Have a meeting set for tomorrow. And that was done somewhat independently. I mean, I, well, let me say this. Completely independently, because we didn't know it was coming on the agenda. And we thought, well, maybe here's a different approach if there's some budgetary advantages of a different it, It's actually combined. This is one part of it, and the Shreveport Green discussion is another part of it. You know, everything from what they want to do with the illegal science to just generally helping with educational educational projects on, uh, on anti-litter. Uh, part of what's staying in the meeting with them tomorrow was to further solidify their particular part of it. But the program actually includes a street sweeping component, the highway maintenance component that some of you guys are familiar with, with the changing and contracting, as well as uh, uh, doing better manicuring of the medians and intersections. So all of that has been rolled into a larger program that's a little beyond Shreveport Green, but Shreveport Green is a part of that process. Great. Well, and I, I think coincidentally, the, the communications that I received, and I think Oliver, as I understand, received similar um, message, was uh, really focused on the street sweeping part of it. So. Um, you know, I think that uh, that meeting, I'm sure, will help align those. Um, I think probably their thoughts are on, in the same place that y'all's mm -hmm. thoughts are in. And so, um, you know, there are some interesting suggestions in there um, and some things that could be worth its discussion. So I'm curious to, after the meeting, to kind of get And it is tomorrow, correct, right, Stan? Yes. Yeah, well, well, great. We just want to make sure that we get updated, and I'm glad to hear y'all are connected. Well, to it's all Okay, Mr. Sibley. Number 68 amends and replaces ordinance number 106 of 2012, a yield intersection to a stop intersection. I had a question yeah. on this. Um, it's not, it, this is listed as being in District B, but it, I believe this is actually in District A. Um, it could, is Maple? Is that on Arlington and Maple? It looks like Maple and Yale. Yale, yeah. that's it. Yeah, so just a point of correction there. I think that needs to be A. Okay, Mr. Sibri. Ordinance 69 amends the 2014 capital improvements budget. This is regarding amending the uh, one of the lift station projects with additional funds. And uh, Robert, don't, uh, Barbara, don't let me speak out of time, but I believe we're getting those funds from the port. From the port. From the state, isn't it? Yeah, through the port. The port is a conduit, but they're state funds, yes. We spend the money and then we get it back after we spend oh, it. These, but these are additional funds to expand the budget, correct? Right. But it will be reimbursed, yes. Okay. Okay. Assembly, proceed. Section D, ordinances on second reading and final passage, number 52, authorizes the mayor to execute a contract with Dr. David Clemens to grant access and permission to plant and maintain live oak trees on the east right of way of Cresswell Drive. This matter was previously postponed. I believe we're ready to go forward if the council is ready to vote on tomorrow. Oliver, is that? Oh, my. Okay. Number 53 amends the 2014 capital improvements budget. This matter was previously postponed. There's one amendment. If I could um, ask for a little discussion on this. We had postponed this in order to get some legal clarification on um, uh, what this does is basically you know, it moves cash on hand from some projects that aren't ready to spend it to some projects that um, are waiting to spend it. Um, but we wanted to make sure that upon sale of the second round of bonds that that money would be able to be returned into, into the same accounts so that those projects could be made whole again. Um, and it looks like we've received a confirmation of that. However, 
I have had conversations with a couple of the department heads about projects in here that we remove some of the funding that's still in, you know, hopefully they won't need it, but there is some chance that they could. These pro some of these projects aren't quite complete. And so um, I would be amenable to, and just want to ask what the opinion of the council is, to um, tabling this until we get some further indications of if those projects that are still, that are mentioned in here, um, can have a little bit more time to get their, uh, you know, finish out, uh, and, and I'm primarily speaking of the police evidence room. Um, the police evidence room uh, is largely complete, but there are still some factors that could um, provide some substantial cost uh, if, if certain things go wrong in the, in the final stages of the construction and moving process. And we don't want to run into a situation where that structure can't open because we've moved contingencies away. Are we, do we not have enough I'm going to use the wrong term, flow in the other projects outside of those projects if there's an overrun in the police evidence. So I don't mean those projects, just the other ones that are in the midst of which, I don't know, what are we about? I know we're all obligated on the first bond, but not all of it has been expensed yet. And in that flow, and so in term I know how to use it, I'm probably not allowed to use that term in here, but is, is there not? Is there enough cushion there? Yes. Yeah. Um, well, my answer is I'm not sure right now. I thought there was in, in these numbers, but in talking to, um, so evidently there are some factors that, um, that I'm not very familiar with, but in the way they catalog the evidence, uh, when it's going to be moved over. They're not sure if the system that they currently have is compatible with the system um, or if the, at the new facility or if there will have to be a software change or some upgrades there. And that could affect that, that final stage as well as, you know, in any construction project, obviously there's a contingency. Um, but there are some s unique to a property evidence storage facility. Sure, sure, but that's not what I'm asking. It, as far as I mean, you got, I don't know, you got 30 hand. million, that's not... Yeah, maybe, D experience. Dale, you got anybody who can speak to that, who well, deals with that? Yeah. We, we can, but I think what, what Councilman Jenkins is, is asking whether or not there's money, for example, in some other projects that could cover. Yeah. SPD's concern, the Chief's concern, his staff is obviously still getting into the property evidence room yeah. and all the things that have to be tested, they may have to go back, so sure. they're reluctant to say, take any of ours. Uh, I think you get a similar attitude with the other departments, but... Uh, uh, and, and we can get with Shelly and see, but the question is whether or not, for example, there's some money in one of these other part projects that could cover the police evidence room as there's a shortage, but can be moved for now while we resolve that issue. Th I, mean, I, mean, I, mean, that. I got it. I got it. I mean, but I'm just telling you from a pragmatic standpoint, I think we got the wrong thing that's yeah. discouraging the horse from moving forward at this yeah, point. Yeah, you, because you really only got two groups here, but let me let yeah. Shelly speak to that. I think we don't end Proposition 2. That's what we did is we went through all of proposition two and looked at it and to make this work we actually had to use funds that weren't even part of the original bond sale for number for the first bond sale we were using you know the hotel motel maintenance sure, funds. so proposition number two does not have any more cash flow to make up that difference we didn't look at proposition one or proposition three when we were putting the, the ordinance together and of course we had done done those previously the council and made adjustments in one and three but what we did with proposition two is take anything that was um, surplus left sort of you know Kings Highway all of those little projects and took all that act, that available funding to put towards those projects that were ready to go so I think so the answer two, is the answer is no, there's not some excess that's out there. We, we're we're trying to put everything to use. We're saying there's not any. There's well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think the answer is we're using it tightly, and yes, a lot of it has been expended. So, I yeah. mean, this is um, not any flow. Not flow. <laughs> not <laughs> okay. If we just took the evidence room monies out of play, is there a significant amount left to do some of these projects? Yes. But, I mean, I think the challenge you have in these projects, um, there's one uh, of the 
projects that is substantially more expensive than the rest of them. Um, but it is also a very important project, um, and that's uh, the Cargill uh, mm -hmm. uh, complex. You know that project um, is substantially more expensive. Um, if that project, and that's that's uh, let's see. My point is, can you not do th three fourths of the project in this whole one? I mean, yeah. I mean, is it really, are we really in an all or nothing? I'm okay with it, whichever way y'all want to do it. I, it just seems kind of silly if we could do three-fourths of them, why not start on the three-fourths of the whole rationale for starting on any of them is to start on some of them. Let's start on some of them. It doesn't matter to me whether it's Cargill or Hattie Perry or whichever. I mean, but I, I mean, I'm not, it is not my ordinance and it's not my, I'm just saying if yeah, we got to remember what our initial r intent is. And I think there is potential to do that. Um, you know, I think it's a matter of um, if the support is there. Um, but yeah, I think that several of them um, could move forward. And um, what I may do is take a look and see if I can um, draft some, some language for a potential amendment that would allow it to move forward and still sort of protect those protect, monies in, yeah. the, in the police evidence facility. And I yes. think that would. Shelly, from a timing standpoint for Cargill, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yes. if she's never going to tell you, there's oh, there's always a good time. No, I mean, well, and, and honestly, we're at Cargill. Where we are at Cargill is where we were with Huntington. I mean, we're not. It's a, you know, we're not. We're trying not to lease it because it's not in good enough condition. Um, but honestly, it's like we need to start. You know, you want to be growing in some things in October and early next spring. I'm not sure that even if we started, if we did a construction contract, we have to go up for bid still. So if you did that, you know, you're talking 90 days. I'm not sure we could get started with it. Like timing wise, is it's worth, it would be the one you might could take out because really we need to go out for bid and be ready to go sometime late next summer so that you're, by the time spring comes the next year, you're growing your grass in. That's we're in a weird time right now. That's where I was going on that is, is when is the best time and, mm -hmm. and if it's well, not you, now. There you've got a little bit different work than you do it. Let me, I'll sit down, let me sit down and look at a timeline that we're going to, we're really, we're getting late. You know, if you think about Huntington, we closed in October and we didn't, you know, we were almost 18 months. So, and it really had to do with growing in. We were through with the project, but you wanted to grow your grass in and, and if we need to time, it'd be ideal to time that right. And so it might be one of the ones we could put off That's my point. easily. I mean, let me spend some time looking at it with like today and in the morning. <laughs> Great, well, okay. I'll talk to you tomorrow morning. Yeah. But that is, that is definitely a potential. So we'll look at that. I don't want to use the term flow, but if a project takes 18 months, yeah. <coughs> there's, some time where you're not writing the whole big check. There is. Okay, Mr. Sibley. Ordinance 61, again, we're under ordinances on second reading and final passage. So number 61 amends the 2014 Community Development Special Revenue Fund budget. This is regarding some additional uh, emergency shelter grant funding. Any questions? Okay. Let's move on, please. Ordinance 62 repeals part of ordinance number 9 of 2007 which created a four-way stop intersection at Danfield Court, Helmsdale Court, and Stonehaven Drive and to enact the intersection of Danfield Court, Helmsdale Court, and Stonehaven Drive as a two-way stop intersection. Mr. Webb? What? You got any comments? No. Okay. Proceed. Ordinance 63 amends the 2014 general fund budget. This is, I believe, regarding the SPAR track program. Any comments? Everybody happy with it? Uh, this is the one. Yeah, I would presume this is, uh, Mr. Thompson, you? I'm happy. All right, <laughs> are you happy? I'm happy. We just want to make sure that we get the money in. And, and oh, I'm can, very happy. Huh? Oh. And they can do <laughs> what needs to be done. I will say I, I have seen the travel request come uh, across my desk, so I assume they're, they're I going for you to walk back up there. But did you want to comment on that? Yeah. We just want to make sure that they get the money so they they can 
uh, have their program. Yes, they've already, um, they have been to two meets already and they were able to raise enough funds to cover part of that. We've covered the rest of it pending this um, budget ordinance and hoping this passes so we can go ahead and book their final two trips. The last one being their, um, the national championship, which is in Houston this year, which helps with the budget. So we appreciate, and I know they will appreciate any help you can give them. Okay. All right, Mr. Sibley. Ordinance 64 authorizes the mayor to execute all necessary legal instruments to affect the exchange of certain immovable property owned by the city of Shreveport for certain immovable property owned by Louisiana CVS Pharmacy LLC, repealing ordinance number 35 of 2014 and otherwise providing with respect thereto. This matter is not to be adopted prior to July 8th, 2014. Any questions? Just, that, this is the same deal we did before though, right? Yeah, we just, the timing wasn't right when we did Correct. it. Okay, let's move. Number 65 amends the 2014 capital improvements budget. This is regarding the air, airfield directional guidance sign replacement project. Any questions? Proceed. Number 66 is an ordinance authorizing an amendment to the agreement and lease with MBI Global LLC. Otherwise, provide with respect there too. This is not to be adopted prior to July 8, 2014. This is the matter that the mayor spoke about at the last meeting in terms of instead of putting it on the table, keeping it on the agenda in the event that situation changes and we need to do an amendment to that lease. Any questions? If not, Mr. Thompson, any? I'm not aware of any matter to be removed from the table. Okay. Uh, we have some property standards appeals. We'd like to look at those at this point. Thank you. Our first case is um, in your area, Mr. Sean. 3413 Palm Street. Mm -hmm. The owner is present. Would you let him come with you, please? Uh, recommendation on this house since he has started doing some work on it is to proceed with the rehab on this. We're going to ask for 60 days. Let's hear from him. Yeah, let's let's hear from him. I saw his facial expressions, and I didn't read that too <clears throat> well. Uh, Herman Dickens, thirty-eight twelve Scenic Drive, Shreveport. No, oh, I had purchased a house that was in distress from my friend. And it was so much pressure to keep the house from being demolished until I really hadn't did as much work as could have been done on the house. Because I know I had cut the grass and I got a certified letter that the grass wasn't cut. So it, it slowed me down on the process because I didn't understand the process. And um, I'm, I'm doing, doing a good job on it. And I know the neighbors on each side and they saying they looking out for it. So I feel real comfortable about, you know, investing my last couple of dollars into that property to save, you know, save. I, I'm, you know, I used to be a city planner, and it just disturbs me when I see all these vacant properties in uh, Shreveport that's being torn down. And um, that's why I invested in that house. I want to see that I save that house from becoming a vacant lot. 
I, I can understand what you're saying, but mm -hmm. it, it presses me, you know, when I get a lot of phone calls from folks who live in these areas where you've got a lot of vacant property that's mm -hmm. running that property down. Yeah. So this is why Ms. Farnell and this is why the city has been about uh, removing uh, uh, properties that will cause uh, uh, your property value to run down and will cause unsafe situations because a lot of times we have a lot of, uh, uh, I don't want to say crackhead, but we have a lot of dope dealing that go on in some of these uh, vacant properties. properties and, and people who live next door to them uh, wants to do something with them. So I'm glad that you are about fixing this particular one up, and I hope you understand what Ms. Farnell is saying. Yes, I understand. Yes. Also, additionally, within this 60 days that we're going to give him to rehab this house, I would ask him that in the next 10 days he abate the care premise around it. Are you understanding now so you can understand the process? Did you did you explain it to him so you understand? understand? But what I, what the, what it is with this is that when I got this property, they were using it for a trash can. Everybody threw all the garbage around the house and now. And that's why she was going to tear it down. Huh? That's why it was going to be them. Yeah, yeah, I understand that, but once you get in and get the, you know, get the trash away, and then it's a livable piece of property. But I find that there's so many people live in houses that are worse than the houses that are being torn down. So, you know, with me, I think that the city should come up with some type of way to do some infield with these property. I know I was born and raised in Cedar Grove, and I don't know... You know, I just know every house and everybody. I don't know anything that, that was on those lots, you know. And it's it, it just catchy. You know, I know it's low to, low income uh, neighborhoods, but they disappeared. You know, my my dreams and my thoughts was in those neighborhoods. And Lord bless me to move out, but, you know, I still have to consider the people that's in there. And that's, that's, the, main, that's the reason I want to take just this particular project and see if I make it work. We I don't would. have a business or anything. That's just me personally right. want to do this. We appreciate that, but I do want you to understand that Ms. Farnell takes into consideration also mm -hmm. the people that live uh, in those neighborhoods because uh, 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 the city does too. So, And don't think we don't get a lot of complaints from people that live in those neighborhoods. Uh, about houses and about property mm -hmm. if we don't do anything about it. And a lot of times we can't, uh, uh, you know, we have to try to look out for, for people who live in those neighborhoods. And uh, uh, because a lot of them, like I say, you got a lot of dope dealing going on. And, and sometimes those, uh, and I've been told this by Mr. Sam Jenkins, that sometimes they get the shooting going on and uh, the bullets don't have no stop signs on them. That's true. So uh, uh, we try to do our best in order to clean those neighborhoods up. And we appreciate you coming in. And, and, and Ms. Farnell, if you know of some other properties that he can purchase and, 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 and invest in and clean up, uh, please give him a list of them. Yeah. He does like him making some progress with this one, Mr. Chairman. Right. I was oh, looking at the uh, pictures from about a year ago, uh, right. coming up to now. Like some progress is being made uh, on this particular premises. Uh, right. We I just need more citizens like him. Still got some things on the outside. Yeah. And what is your recommendation, Ms. Ms. Farnell, again? 60 days for rehab, 10 days to abate the care premises. All right, so move. Second. Then move. Uh, by the chair that we would give him 60 days to uh, improve the property. All in favor vote yes, opposed is no. Yes. I meant the master yes, me. Huh? It didn't click here. I hit request at first. I meant to hit uh, yes. 7-0 vote, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Uh, 
Mr. Funnett, does he understand the process? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. sir. What's the date on that? August 25th. August the 25th. Okay. Okay, Ms. Farnell, next. Yes, sir. All right. Next property is 27. Twenty-seven forty-five Essex Street. Mr. Shine, this is in your area also. Okay. This is a new case. Um, the property is being rehabbed. Um, so my recommendation for this is that he continues the rehab um, process. I would ask that in the next 10 days, he clean the property, abate all the care premises and, and mow the yard. Um, and my recommendation on this one is for 60 days also. Okay, let's have a word from him. You're not gonna do that until I give you. Here. Can I? Can we hear? And he has to get a permit. He was asking about the permit, and I told him that that permit would come after the recommendation and your approval. Okay, now does he understand what you're saying? Yes. Let me hear him say. Uh, yeah. What's your name? Mohammed Dhaman, 5754 Federal Drive. Okay, you understand what she's recommending? Yes, sir. Okay, so move. Second. Then uh, moved by the chair, second by Councilman Sam Jenkins. All in favor, vote yes. Opposed, us no. Uh, Mr. Thompson, I hope you understood that. Yes, sir. Okay. Six one. Oh, that's right. Hey, that's an Okay. Uh, that one. Oh, that's okay. Uh, that makes a windstorm, that one's not going to Okay. Waiting on you. All right, Nicholson. Ready for me? Okay. I'm sorry. Our next address is 1942 Nicholson Street. The owner is present and he's asking for 90 days to finish completion of the house. I have no problem with that and I'm recommending uh, the 90 days. The grass and everything is already cut so we don't have a problem with that. So my recommendation is for the 90 days. This is in Mr. Epperson's area. So move for an uh, extension of 90 days. It looks like you're doing a good job of making some improvements there. So uh, keep up the good work and let's just stay on the schedule. And uh, it's looking good. Okay, it's been moved by Councilman Everson and second by Councilwoman McCullough that we give him 60 days. Nine. I'm sorry, 90 days. 90 days. September 22nd. All in favor vote yes, opposes no. Motion passes with the 6 0 vote. One out of the chain. Thank you, sir. Okay. All right. Our next case is 2420 Jenny Street, Miss Eunice Wilkerson. This house is. And this okay. is in Miss McCullough's area. Uh, this house is 90%, 85% burn. And I've had, um, I've had an opportunity to speak with uh, permits on this structure because of the, because of the fire. And Mrs. Wilkerson wants to rehab the house. My recommendation for this structure. Is that Wilkerson or Wilson? No, I'm sorry. Wilker. Her name is Wilkerson. The Wilker. house is Jenny Lane, 2420 Jenny Lane. It's the last one. Wilkerson. Wilkerson. Yeah, Wilkerson. Okay. Okay. 
So. Whatever you want to do, though. Whatever you want to do, I'm doing. Well, I'm listening. Okay. I looked at so, the, I looked at the pictures. Okay. What I'm requesting on this property is that we give Miss Wilkerson 60 days. In that 60 days, she is to uh, get a letter from engineering stating that the foundation is good and it's good enough shape for her to rebuild on it because that's her desire to rebuild on it. Also, she would need to get floor plans. And the letter from engineering has to be a stamped copy. She gets that information for us in 60 days, then we can proceed with um, after permit has determined that the foundation, the foundation is, is stable that. for her to rebuild and everything on, then we can proceed with the amount of time to give her for this. And so that is my recommendation. That yes, ma'am. Can, can, can I ask if she understands? Yeah. I'm, I'm just more on procedures. I don't want to get into. Uh, just procedurally, when you demolish something, you don't. Do we demolish it above and beyond the foundation, or do we just demolish what's above the foundation? We demolish what's above the foundation. We don't touch the foundation. Okay. So I'm a little confused about. As far as the thing that's before us right now is whether we're demolishing the property, not even it doesn't have anything to do with the foundation. Why is that even in the discussion? Well, because she doesn't want to demolish the structure. She wants to rehab it. Wow. The way the structure is now, I'm told it cannot be. It has to be demolished. Correct. It's not a concrete foundation. I mean, is it? Well, it didn't matter. Yeah. Concrete foundation. Yeah, yes. Concrete looking at this is concrete. Yes. So but the reason the why I gave the demolish the demolish doesn't affect the the concrete. The concrete, then. No, I'm putting that in there because of the fact of the if she is that she wants to rehab it, and I don't have a problem with her rehabbing it. But for her to rehab it, this has to be done. Does that make sense? This is what I'm asking. It but has to, according to permits, because. But, but what's before us, and this is why I'm just curious, okay. what's before us is don't demolish it, but we all agree, I don't think anybody in this room has given us a reason why not to demolish it, or, or is there some discussion on whether we should no, demolish it? We are demolishing the structure. We are demolishing okay. it, or somebody. We are asking, yes. So we are, or we're, ask, what are we're asking to demolish see, it? I thought we were holding up on demolition to give her an opportunity right. to I'm go sorry. before the engineering department. We're asking for that, we're asking for, right now we're asking that we allow her to give her enough a chance to actually see if she can rehab it on this structure. My, I was going. I was asking for a demolition. We talk. She wants to rehab it. I'm in agreement with her. But in order for her to rehab this structure, we got to figure out if it's going to be stable enough. So I'm willing to give her 60 days to determine if she can rehab it. Based on the foundation. Based on the foundation. And Dorothy, that's the part about interacting with the engineers. That's the part about it. She has around. to bring a letter back because if the letter, and she can save if she it. can up, and save it, then we are going to then recommend demolition of the structure. So basically, she'll have sixty days to confirm that she can rehab it. That right. she can right. but, rehab. But we got to demolish it, whether she's going to rehab it or not, right? Well, right. She rehab so it, tears it down herself. Oh, no, yes. right. Well, she demolish. can. It's yeah. nothing to tear down. It's already turned. Well, that's what I'm asking. Clear it off. Don't you yeah, have to well, clean the slate to even start to rebuild the shit? She would do it. Yeah. I, I think. But I she's believe. giving her an opportunity and, to even do that. Right. And, We're and, about that. and with my order is going to be for her, these things that are like the way the house is looking now, she's going to have to clean that part up within this 60 days. That was going to be another part of my order as far as all of the debris and stuff that's there now. Does she thinks she can keep the walls? That she thinks that she can keep the walls. She thinks that she what? can keep other parts of it. And as I said, 
<laughs> the permits office has explained to me that in order for them to make a decision on it, they've got to have to allow her to say yes, she can rehab it. They want that stamp letter. We have an engineer right there by. Well, well, let him, let him make a statement. Uh, Mr. Chairman, we don't normally perform structural evaluation of houses or foundations for private practice. Right. No, I didn't think he did. Yes, oh, you got an outside insurance. Yes, she'll get that from someone else. Yeah, yeah, from someone else. Ah, okay. Oh, she's going to yeah. get it from another engineer? She's get it from someone else. Not so she's going to get it from the outside? Yes. yes. Engineering. Okay. Yes. It, they just said that this is what they would need to, okay. she would have to have. Okay. Ask her if she can do that. Okay. Yes. I did. Let, let, I had asked her. Let me hear her say something. I mean, she's just standing there. <laughs> I was just talking. What? Okay, I guess you want me to respond on can we possibly get an engineering to certify Right, and can you uh, possibly get it remodeled to the standards that she's talking about? Yes, I can get if the engineers give us the go ahead. Well, we need to, you know, we have to hire our engineers. Yeah, we have to hire our own engineer, which, like I told her, that the last time we had, that was the reason why we had the six. P. Wilkerson. P.O. Box 376763 7, Port Louisiana 71133. Councilman Shine, yes, as her representative, may I ask her what it is that she has uh, planned for this dwelling? What, what are your plans actually for this dwelling? What is it that you can do? What What are you What What are you plan? Step one. What do you plan to do? When you say. To rehab in order it. to rehab, what is your what is your what is your number one? Right now, the number one thing is we got to contact the uh, engineer to see if the foundation is stable. We I mean, let me ask you this: I'm about Do you think you do better down. going ahead and cleaning it off, I mean, and then hiring I mean, your engineer to come out? Grants. It's not going to make either one. That's not a decision. She's saying that the cleaning part is part of it. She wants to clean along with trying to get the engineer to uh, give us the approval that the foundation is, is stable. And if the foundation is not stable, then we have to uh, remove the... Uh, well, you're going to be charged either way, it seems. What you mean charged either way? I'm saying if... I'm thinking if it was my property and I wanted to consider rehabbing the property, the first thing I'd want to do is get it cleaned off, period. Because if it's an eyesore in the community, you know, that Terry. would be the number one thing to do. Terry. Terry. And then secondly, I would bring in my engineers to look at whether or not, based on the foundation, it's, it, you can rehab it. Those could be done simultaneously. Okay, so you're going to do those simultaneously within 60 days? Right. Okay, let's give her 60 days. I move for 60 days. Okay, it's been moved by Councilwoman uh, McCullough, second by Councilman. S I, I give it a second. I, I, I think she, I mean, this appears to have just started the first part of the year. We, six months, only about six, six months. months. Mm -hmm. uh, give her 60 days. I think Ms. Wilkerson, I mean, she may need to give, be given an opportunity to look and see if she can accomplish yeah. what it is uh, it she said not to do. I'm familiar with Ms. Wilkerson. And, you know, I wouldn't judge a book by its cover. I think you ought to give an opportunity to see what you can do with the situation. That's my that's my appreciation of it. Yeah. Can I, may, may yes. I, okay. And I, I don't dispute her ability or interest. Everybody said that that's not. I'm, I'm a little worried about if there's any liability for the city of something that transpires out there. I mean, because kind of we're, and I don't know this, I'm kind of thinking in my mind, are we saying that we're going to, as a city, what appears to be a fairly dangerous piece of property for the city of Shreveport to have any responsibility in, and we're kind of granting that continuance for the next 60 days. That concerns me. If that's if I'm misguided in that concept, um, I will happily stand down on my objection at this point. Uh, so that's what I, I mean, want. We've had advice. cases two and three years old, Oliver. Yes, but this not at six this. Months. I mean, this is well uh, beyond. Mr. Chairman, okay. yes. And just before you say that, Councilwoman McCullough, you you see Made what happens. You see what happens when you invite uh, someone into your district and. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that back. Go ahead. I just want you to know, to uh, Councilman Jenkins' point, I did speak with the city attorney. The issue 
I was trying to understand Councilman uh, Alder Jenkins' issue. I think the issue is here is if the property is under order of demolition right now, that means it's in pretty bad shape. If we just go, okay, you got 60 more days, there's a potential someone could trespass, That's get right. hurt in the interim, and then we're liable. What, uh, what she just shared with me is she would suggest two things. One, a shorter window to get the engineer's support, and secondly, that a part of the order be to secure the property so that we don't have that issue of, in the interim, mm -hmm. someone going in, possibly hurting themselves or hurting someone else. So. Uh, just to Councilman Jenkins' uh, issue, that's what the city attorney just shared. With How would she secure the I mean, property? That, that's, <laughs> which may be impossible, but that's, that. again, that's, uh, <laughs> I don't know. again, that's, she, she simply it. concurs with the issue that there may be some liability. She sees where I'm coming from on this deal, is exactly. all you're saying. Okay. Yeah. That is my so only concern. Not 60, but maybe 45 days. Good Lord. Huh? That's what it sounds like I heard. Bro. Well, that it was suggested versus yeah. the 60, 60 day window, we would give her a lesser window. Well, it's, well, I was going to yeah, it's difficult for us to substitute our, our judgment for Ms. Farnell in dealing with her, even yourself, uh, Councilman. But from an administration point of view, that liability question is simply something we wanted to put on the record. Councilman mm -hmm. Jenkins raised it. It is a legitimate issue. We do have to think about what happens. I mean, if it's in such shape that it needs to be demolished, then that suggests the potential for someone uh, perhaps getting hurt or, or something else going on there. So without securing it somehow in the interim, the longer you extend that period, the greater opportunity there is for something to happen. Have we already voted well, previously to demolish it? No. 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 No, we have not. And I can, here's the thing. I see the word new here. All the, what, what's the, that means that this is a new case for right. this. So That's I all. This, this is the first months. time this, is, this has gone before us. Um, because of the structure does need to be demolished. I'm in agreement with that. Okay. That's the reason why we have it on here, okay? And what she, and I'm going to suggest 30 days because whatever decision we make here today, she's going to have 30 days to appeal it to first JDC. So regardless, we cannot move until her appellate rights expire and within the 30, 30 days. days right so then what i would suggest let's shorten the time for the th for 30 days it's okay. been moved by councilman so moved McCullough, for 30 days uh second by councilman we, sam jenkins for 30 days all in favor vote yes opposed to no she has 30 days to do something with her property and then explain and to her after those 30 days what her options are if she doesn't do what she agrees to do here today. Okay, and we want that place, we want it cleaned up within that 30 days. It has to what be cleaned I was up. What's going to add to it? And if not, we yeah. proceed with recommending demolition, right, Ms. Parnell? <coughs> Is that correct? Yes. If she doesn't do it within 30 days, it needs to be understood that we will proceed with the recommendation of demolition. Yes. May, may I suggest that, uh, again, just listen, that you not gloss over the issue of getting that report the whole idea was to give her time to get the engineer's report to see whether or not it could be rehabbed and make sure that she understands that that's what's supposed to happen within that 30 days uh if there's any other conditions that would help mitigate against the liability i think that also needs to be indicated so she's very clear on, on what the city is saying and doesn't leave yeah, with, a, with a, a misperception on every, what her expectations are the property needs still needs to be cleaned up and at some point where that wall is I mean, it's a vacant wall, but that need, all of that needs to be cleaned up so that, um, and if it, ain't, it can be secured, it needs to be secured, but it has to be cleaned up because right now it does have the potential of liability because of the way that it is as far as all the debris, wood, and stuff around it. So that has to be done. Could you, uh, I, I, I hope, does she understand what you're saying? I mean, I. That's what I want to make, make you sure know. that she understands. I gotta tell you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay. Guys, right mind. Well, they just want to make sure that you do. I mean, if you understand, that's all they want to know if you do. Because this comes back be before us again within 30 days. And so if you happen to come back, then we would have agreed that we gave you 30 days in order to do what what it is you know that we're presented to you to be done here today it's on it's on record 
ma'am. I'm still there with her. Okay. All right. I, I know where to Well, then, have we voted on it, Councilman Shine? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Mr. Chairman. I need Ms. McCullough's vote. Yes, sir, Mr. Uh, our Council. letter went to Miss Mary Wilson. Did it go to the wrong person? No. She was going to be representative. I'm sorry. She was a de She was the pick as an agent to speak for the property. Because I didn't want to come. So is okay. it your letter property or the Mary Wilson's property? Eunice Wilson. Funny. Well, you tell she didn't want to come. Mm -hmm. Well, we went to Mayor Wilson. Is that what you're asking me? Place. Yeah, we sent the letter. Yeah. Yeah. Our letter. Thank you. We can tell you. Thank 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 you. The care premises violations are to be abated or cleaned up. Yes. Is that within 10 days? 30. Within, she has 30 days to clean up the care premises violations. Yes, ma'am. Okay. She has how long to secure the property? 10. She has 10 days to secure the property. That's right. There's no way to secure you can't. You can't secure the property unless you had a guard the there and put a fence around it. It can't be. Y'all need to see that. Talking about. I want to see make here. sure Else about the motion before right. you move on past this case. Mr. Thompson, I understood the motion. Mr. Thompson, would you explain that to the city attorney? I thought she had 30 days to it clean is, it right? and also 30 days to get the engineering report to indicate whether or not she can build on the structure. She can build on the foundation. Did you? Did you? Okay. I just wanted to be clear, Mr. Chairman. I heard you right. say just to do something with the property. Right. I wanted to be specific, both for the record and so that Ms. Wilkinson also understood what time period she had to, to now, uh, make the repairs. Right. And well, that's, that's what we was trying to get from them. And of course, now she said that she understood. Is it, can we put that in writing for her? You know, for references? I mean, to, we'll can send we a put letter. a letter in, in writing? We're gonna send the letter to Ms. Uh, Smith, Mary Wilson. Is that correct? Our letter went to the Miss Eunice Wilkerson. I don't know. That may have been the person who appealed. Mm -hmm. we, we have Miss Mary Wilson here. Yeah. Mary Wilson. Joe was on to something in the who, very who beginning. Owns the yeah, yeah, I was right. And you don't know the property, right? Who owns the property? I do. And that's the one with. Well, they didn't send it to her then. Well, you could say Miss Wilkerson, uh, obviously, Miss, this lady that you all are talking about, it must have been the one to come down to uh, file we'll the appeal. We'll call you and get the correct yes, address. Mm -hmm. Could we maybe send it to Miss Wilkerson and CC it to Mary Wilson? Uh, Miss Wilkerson is the owner of the property. Miss, what I'm understanding from the owner, and this is Miss Wilkerson, who's the owner of the property, that Miss Mary Wilson, Wilson came down and she must have applied for the appeal. But who is she? Is she like she a said, relative or co-owner? She said she was, co -owner? Agent, no, she, that said was that she, was, she was someone that she was asking to speak on her behalf because she didn't want to come down okay. here. That's what she said. Do you have Miss Wilkinson's address? No, Miss Wilson. No. You and Miss Wilkinson, yeah, that's where we sent our letter to. We will call you to get that address. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Miss Farnell, just for clarification on my part because we have talked about a lot of things care premise you're talking about these burned out walls that we see in the pictures all of that goes away and nothing is left but the brick walls the I'm slab. talking about all this stuff and on the, the ground all the stuff that is on the ground here I'm talking about structure I think what you're talking about all of this around there. That's what I'm speaking of. I just want to want to be sure there's no confusion of, of what we're expecting to be before us when we look at pictures 30 days from now. Yes, yes. I'm expecting all of that that's on the ground, all of that around the ground, on the ground here. I'm expecting all of that to be cleaned up. When she does all of that, there should only be these one little, two, three, four little 
studs that's standing here. All of everything that's on the ground. And, and Mr. Sibley, we want to make sure that we are nice to people so they will be glad to come down and come before us. We don't want them to be reluctant about coming down. Miss Wilkerson, we want to be nice to you here. <laughs> we do, we want to be nice. So we're going to give it to her a description of what she's going to be expected to do, right, by way of letter. And yes, then send it to Miss Wilson as well. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So you have 30 days, Miss Wilkerson. Mm -hmm. My wife might be there to see you. Miss <coughs> Wilkerson, you have 30 days. I'm staying. Okay. All right. She's just a quiet person. Yeah. Very quiet. Very That's reserved. Why she wanted Miss Wilson down here today. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you good. Now okay. you know her maiden name was was Wilson. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. She might be. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much. Now come back and see us again. Now you see, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> All right, uh, Mr. Sibley. Uh, Mr. Shine. Yes, between you and Mr. Thompson, y'all can. We completed the alcohol beverage ordinance appeals uh, under the Metropolitan Planning Commission appeals and zoning board of appeals. BAC 3514, I believe that's to be taken up tomorrow. Uh, that's the south side of Thor Boulevard, 150 okay. feet west of Thornhill Avenue. I'd like to talk to Stephen Jean on the record about that one. Okay, Steve. Yeah, now, if I may. We don't, put, we don't, we don't hey. have anything else to vote on today, do we? No. No, it's tomorrow. Okay. You know, we have something else to vote on. We, we have a, a request for a continuance. So I would recommend that. Let's, okay, we'll take that up first. That's fine. Sam, All right, under uh, BAC 3614, the south side of East Kings Highway, 350 feet west of Uri Drive, uh, there's a request by Mr. Johnson uh, for continuance. I talked to Mr. Um, what is it, Nader? Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Is Mr. Johnson here? No, 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 he's not here. I talked to Mr. Nader, and he's agreed to July the 22nd to continue until July the 22nd. So by agreement of the parties, if it's okay with the council, you may want to make a motion to continue. I'll make a motion for a continuance. So moved by Councilman Oliver Jenkins, and, second and by Councilman Mike Carvin. Yes. Yeah. All right. All in favor vote yes, opposed is no. Now, by the way, my only question, Arden, well, let's vote on it, but can I, do, we can do it at this meeting and not tomorrow. I'd like to do it at this meeting okay. if this glass agrees so that I can make sure that they understand that they don't, they don't need to be here yeah. tomorrow. Okay, that's that's why. We have to vote okay. by hand? Yeah, yeah raise your hand. 7 0 for the motion. That's it, That's it. Okay. All right. Now I'm back on to. The BAC 3514 Thor Boulevard. Yes, sir. Okay. So, um, needless to say, this is we've gotten both a petition from some neighbors. Not it's not in the packet, but I got it in an email from this from the city council office, I believe. Are we going to add that to the packet, or do I just need to tell them, or do we pass around a copy, or did everybody get it? Uh, we can add it to the uh, packet if you. I mean, I just don't know what, how we normally do it. We normally put, put those items on the agenda. I mean, attach it to it. To, okay. So I guess to include it, I. It's, there are 15 houses on the street, and I don't know how many names I got, but 15 names, but probably two for a couple of houses. Um. The question is. Is it two variances that they're asking for, or is it one variance? And do you need a variance for both a relocation of your garage, and you need a variance for a secondary structure with water and electricity? Now, I know about secondary structure with water and electricity requiring a variance, but if you relocate your garage, does that require a variance? 
Okay, the garage isn't the question. It's the fact that they have a secondary residential structure that's on the second floor. So that's secondary residential, which requires a special exception approval. The the issue regarding the uh, the other structure. Let me say it differently. If they eliminate the secondary residential structure part of the program and just move the three car garage as depicted, does that require a variance? Yes, it does. Okay, so there are two separate variances. I mean, if we, the appeal. Well, okay, let me make sure because it gets a little confusing. As long as it's a secondary residential structure, then that that can have the garage associated with it. When you take the secondary residential away, now it's no longer a secondary residential structure, it's an accessory structure. Then they would have two secondary structures on the property which would require a variance. You'd also have a variance in the size of the structure because they're only they're limited to a specific size by ordinance. And so this three car garage would exceed that size. Are you following me? So, so yes, if you, when you, when you make it a, a secondary residential structure, you can have a, a garage associated with it. So it, it's basically just a secondary residential structure. Okay, and then what is the square foot footage required? I mean, because the appeal. I believe if you match the materials on the property, you can go up to 675 square feet, and this is 858 square feet. So if the um, we'd have to look at the the, the gross uh, footprint of the property, not the gross area totally, but just at what the footprint is. This appears to exceed that, so they would have to have a variance for for secondary, but also they'd have to have a variance because they'd have a two accessory structures then. Because because if you eliminate the if you hold on a moment because they currently have one accessory structure right yeah and as part house. of this plan there oh they're adding one and then they're putting another one where they the other one is remaining as well okay what's happening there is a a pool house that's being modified it's an, basically <laughs> an open air structure for the most part. It's not any type of, of uh, residence, so therefore that's an accessory structure. It is, it is, it doesn't exceed the square footage requirements because most of it is open air, okay, like a porch. Then you have the proposed two-story garage with the residence above. When you have the residence there, that basically, that, that structure is a secondary residential structure. When you take away the residential component, it is now an accessory structure. And that accessory structure is limited in size by ordinance, and you're limited in number of accessory structures, which is only one. So you would have to have a variance for an additional accessory structure, and you'd have to have a variance in the size, which would allow for, and I'm not doing the math, but basically, a uh, couple of hundred fair, uh, square foot in the variance in the size. Now, the, the materials seem to match match the uh, uh, so primary. Though this thing is completely open air in the back, and maybe it isn't complete, maybe there's a bathroom in there. Yeah, yeah, there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a component of it that, that makes it uh, a an accessory structure. secondary structure because there's a... Or an accessory structure. An accessory structure. So it's accessory to the primary use. When you when you bring another residential structure in, then that becomes a special exception use rather than a variance. Okay. So and I guess a little bit of procedure. If for some reason do you know why the one person voted ag against it and why the four voted for it? Uh, it wasn't actually, I don't recall what was actually put on the record. Um, to be honest with you, I'd have to look into it a little further to, to answer that question specifically. Because in this case, if we said, okay, you get rid of the, the secondary residential 
aspect of the secondary, second additional, whatever you call it. The, the, the additional property. accessory structure that it's in. Right. There's really no point to send it back to the ZBA because they've already agreed to it in a more robust, robust manner anyways. The real question is, I mean, because the people that are appealing it, which is most of the neighborhood, I guess they're appealing the whole thing. I don't know. What well, well let, 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 me, let me say one thing. If, if this uh, homeowner wanted to put the, a, a apartment for their children that was as long as it was accessed through the house and as long as the garage were attached to the house they could go right next door to the permit center and be and, and, and handle that it was their desire to have a separate structure because of the aesthetics they felt that it was more aesthetically pleasing to have a two separate structures the neighborhood believes that that, that it's incompatible with with the with the aesthetics of the neighborhood but by right they could go in as long as they had a connection indoor to this apartment which is supposed to be for their children they could actually do that as a part of their residence without any additional approvals so this is a choice to have it a separate structure which was stated in the in the uh hearing that it was an aesthetic choice and also i I'm, I'm, I'm imagine it also had other considerations in the way that the site laid out because if, as you see they're providing an, a, an opportunity for a drive to go, to go between the two buildings but they could they could eliminate that completely it, by making a choice to bringing that as an integral part of their primary residence without a secondary they could just come in and attach it but this this is that they felt was more aesthetically pleasing to the neighborhood they being the owner of the property okay so conceivably I could make a motion tomorrow to not approve the secondary residential structure but approve the two accessory structures yes with the uh, with a additional exception to grant above the footprint of secondary structures. Correct. Okay, and can you somehow tell me what that difference is? Because 33 times 26 is much more than 675, but I'm assuming you're. Well, I will, we, I'll tell you what, before tomorrow, we'll check all the math, and if you would like, we could write something up. Just tell me what the, We're, yes. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, if it all of a sudden makes it one third of the size, well, then I might reconsider that aspect. Of it. But if we're talking about we could, we could 10%. We could work with, uh, with staff to, uh, to make sure that we lay it out for you from okay. what we understand you're saying. Okay, thank you. Okay. Anything else? Uh, Anything it has to be it has to by the way when we say connected it has to be the connection has to be heat and cooled i.e whatever the timber has to be enclosed right and has to we're talking about the residential portion of it what i'm talking about is they couldn't have a completely independent entrance so that it could function as a separate apartment but it could have an entrance safe an internal stairwell that allowed the, the that to be accessed internally and the garage is attached to the primary the owner felt that when they uh, they believe they look at that with their architect and they didn't like the way it looked made the building look you have a very rectangular building right now that that they believe would take away from the character of the of the, of the structure by attaching a lower level um, uh, but and it was also going to cause the secondary structure was going to have to be so much higher to match up with the roof lines yes. with the roof line and so th there are a lot of other additional architectural right right I, possibly could be overcome uh, but it was the it was the owner's desire not to go that direction so that's the reason they asked for uh, and and obtained the uh, the approval okay thank you all right
Okay. Sir, so, the only other matter under the MPC appeals is BAC 44 14, uh, which uh, will not be considered until July the 22nd. Okay. Uh, that's fine. We have no other appeals. Okay, well, reports from officers, boards, and committees. Are there any? If not, uh, uh, Mr. Thompson, I know you have not completed your clerk report yet. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, I really do have a couple of items under the clerk's report. Okay. Uh, we received uh, the an appointment of Assistant City Engineer uh, Patrick Furlong. Uh, I believe one day, uh, if it would have been, if we would have gotten it one day earlier it would have been on the agenda for today and I believe the administration had asked that the council consider adding this or do you care I'm not familiar uh, I'm not aware that we were asking to okay. um, but I will confirm that and make sure that we're not asking that it be added and if, if so we can add it tomorrow uh, we also received a request for a continuance which you've uh, already acted on and we also received from Mr. J. Whitney Pesnell, a request uh, for the City Council to rehear and reconsider its decision in the um, approval of the subdivision of Unit Number Six of Esplanade Subdivision by Larkin Development at Rails Back LLC, Case Number SC-13-14. We uh, I believe we have Mr. Arsenault here. He's not requesting the continuance. I know, but I was just, I, I know uh, Tom and I served together on the council, and I know how well he loves to talk. So uh, I wanted to give him an opportunity if he wanted to say a word or two about it, but we'll come back to I, it. I also received a telephone call from Mr. Pasnell uh, where he said that uh, they would not be ready to uh, take up the matter tomorrow, but I think that he said that uh, they had no objection to the city council determining whether or not the matter would be reheard, whether or not the rehearing request would be granted. Mr. Thompson, they were requesting some additional documentations from the council, weren't they? They have a public records request for a long laundry list of documents from the city. So did they get that? I mean, because as I I don't think they have it yet. Um, and I don't know what the status of that request is. I don't either. Does the city attorney, do, do you know the status of that request? Uh, Mr. Thompson, would you explain to the situation? The public records request by Mr. Pesnell. Yes, it was a records request received. I can't remember the gentleman's name. Uh, Willis Knighton, he's in the business office. Attempted to contact him on Friday. Purpose is to request an extension. I have not. Is that Elliot Stone Cipher? No, sir. It was not. Um, I can't think of his name, but it was not Mr. Stone Cipher. It was someone actually employed in uh, the Division of Business Administration with Willis Knighton. But at any rate, we are working on trying to gather the information. We forwarded a copy of the request to all of you so that you would be aware of it. And we're working now to gather the information in response to the request. Okay, Port, you, you want to comment on uh, uh, the request to reconsider? No, I don't have anything to add other than what Mr. Thompson has already stated to you. Okay. Mr. Thompson, uh, are you uh, suggesting the position that the council should take? Um, no, if the council would like uh, Ms. Glass perhaps to just talk generally about reconsiderations, we could do that. I think that would be, uh, I think that would be in order. <clears throat> well, Mr. Shine, um, First, I looked at the subdivision ordinance. You know, sometimes on zoning and subdivision cases, 
there's something in the ordinance that says something will not be reconsidered after a decision is made for one year. However, on the subdivision ordinance, it says if the subdivision plat approval was denied, it cannot be heard again for one year. So it, if it was approved, which it was in this case, uh, the ordinance does not prohibit that. Um, Robert's Rules of Order um, says that you can reconsider a matter on the same legislative day in the same meeting. Uh, so if you were being asked to reconsider the matter at a later meeting date, um, it would be contrary to the rules and you would have to move to suspend the rules um, to do that. Um, I think that's basically, you know, what the situation is. A as I see this, you know, it's something that would not appear on the agenda um, unless the rules are suspended and there was a motion to reconsider. Yeah, I'm doing and also, uh, it, the motion has to be made by a person on the prevailing right. side. On the prevailing, prevailing side. side. Yeah. So that means that the motion will, will or will not be made. Um, <laughs> there are five of us. What? Yeah. I, mean, my, okay, I guess my question, let me ask this, since now I realize that it came down to five of us, so you're looking at two of us over here. Okay. So, I mean, is there some, I mean, what's the, without knowing anything, do we know why, what's the rationale for reconsider? Is there some substantive issue that was over, is there something that's being brought forward that wasn't considered last time and should be considered this time? And his uh, request, uh, he says that there was a secret meeting held by council members and as a result of that secret meeting, the decision was made. Um, so I guess the question is, was there any secret <laughs> was illegal meeting uh, that council members attended? And uh, of course, the clerk does not know of any, but uh, we would not know of all of the meetings that council members have attended. And in order to help, I, I may, I could also tell you what Robert Rule says about reconsideration. It says, it enables a majority in an assembly within a limited time and without notice to bring back for further consideration a motion which has already been voted on. The purpose of reconsidering a vote is to permit correction of hasty, ill-advised, or erroneous action, or to take into account added information or a changed situation that has developed since the time, since the taking of the vote. Mr. Thompson, I'd like to ask you, would that, would would the decision of the vote uh, would be impacted by any of that that you just read? Would it be a hasty, uh, ill-advised? Uh? Th those are things for the council to determine, I guess. Uh -huh. <laughs> I would. Uh, Mr. Chairman, well, if I may, yeah. uh, just to add to um, the answer that Mr. Thompson gave to Mr. Jenkins. Um, when the gentleman, and I'm sorry, I cannot recall his name, but the gentleman from Willis Knight and called about his request, uh, the message that was left was that the information that would be received in response to the public records request was germane to their request for reconsideration. Okay, uh, that, that makes, is it, he's looking for somebody to tell him there's a reason for us to reconsider, I'm gathering. Okay, well, you voted so, wrong. Other than that, yeah, there you go. There you go. Wrong. <laughs> I guess it is. There you go, Ron. I happen to have read somewhere that we had <laughs> voted wrong, but I haven't necessarily. <laughs> but, no, okay. So, and let me ask one last thing. So far in your discoveries in terms of filling out this public records request, has there been any thing? And I'm not saying that people are going around doing meetings that are should have been public meetings but is there some suggestion out there that there is a meeting that should not have happened I'm, I'm honestly asking has anybody disclosed that to the city attorney it's been rumored but I mean I guess asking somebody if there's a secret meeting yeah. is probably not really a very good question but <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't be very secret at that point, but I mean, exactly. I mean, I'm trying to be fair to this person's, if you're saying it's up to five of us, that it's really up to five of us, and so I'm 
Well, we give everybody a chance, but... I, I guess each of the five could determine whether or not he or she had been to a secret meeting. Why well, would we tell you? Then that person then who proposes to hear this new thing would be kind of no longer a secret at that point, huh? Okay, well... Well, well I think that Mr. Stonecipher's, one of Mr. Stonecipher's communications refers to a council member inferring that there was a secret meeting. So if there's a council member that's aware of a secret meeting, then... That, that starts a discussion point there. Um, but I think other than that, we're just going through a big public records request. Yeah. To state my case, I'm not interested in reconsidering this unless something is discovered during the public records request that Correct. suggests there's some data to do that. So my plea or request for the administration is to Acknowledge that public records request. Please provide them that data as it becomes available. And if on the basis of that data, there is reason to reconsider, I think it's only fair to give them that opportunity. Okay? So, yeah. and I, I welcome any other comments from any of the other five of us that are in the play. Was this Mr. Pesnell? P-E-S-N-E-L? Pesnell? I think that was his name. Okay. He's the attorney. Now he. Yeah, that's the one I right, was asking. I didn't even know who attorney. he was, but I think that was Willis Knight's attorney. Attorney, right. Okay. Uh -huh. But he's not a part of the administration. I think mm -hmm. the uh, I think the attorney said that someone who was a part of the administration for Willis Knight requested uh, 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 the public record request. It was not that. It was not. The attorney for Willis Knight, from what I can understand, I and mean, from what I heard, if I heard it right. What? What is the pleasure from other council members that was a part of that meeting? You know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying. I mean, I'm gonna make it clear. I was not at any meeting, but I don't get invited to those meetings. <laughs> <laughs> they leave me out of the secret ones. They just bring me into the public, public ones. ones. <laughs> Ron, what you gonna do with I'm them? I'm not huh? aware of any public that was yeah, held inappropriately. Okay. Or any secret meeting. Yeah, I, nor am I. I, I did not know about, nor did I attend any secret meeting. So. Okay, uh, Thompson, what do we? We move on. Move on. <laughs> Next. I want to make sure that we get an opinion from the from our attorney so we can make sure that we are legal in doing all of this. I, I, would it be safe to say if I'm asked that no member on the prevailing side at this time uh, wishes to move to reconsider? Sounds good to me. I'm okay with that. Yep. I mean, I think you can, from my perspective, you add the provision and you find something in the public record request that suggests there's reason for uh, reconsideration. I'm okay with that as well, but I'm, I'm not... Is that the way you, you, we want to leave it, Mr. Thompson? And if it's in getting a public record request after looking at it, analyzing it, and if it's anything that would uh, probably doesn't like it, point it's to, uh, since uh, uh, Oliver used the word flow earlier, I'm going to use the word point to uh, a reconsideration. I mean, I guess what I'm saying, if there is like a violation of a public meetings law, yeah. Okay. I mean, I'm all for. It. I mean, I mean, if we, if that's what's determined, right. I don't. I mean, that's just not right. Okay. I mean, if Elliot Stone Cipher met with me, or had a phone call with me, I don't think that's reason to reconsider. But oh uh, no, I think he was talking about if council members met among themselves. At, oh, in violation of a public right, 
right. Violation of okay, I, I mean, I'm happy to say I would grant him a reconsideration if there's evidence of that. Uh, did you all hear what? There's one other thing that um, Ms. Glass uh, may want to bring to your attention. And would you do that and then I, I'll discuss it. I'm not sure which. There's a provision which generally says, I think, that if something happens uh, that oh, makes okay. it impossible to reconsider or some action is taken, and I'm looking yeah, for that I, language. Yeah, I, I know what he's talking about. Oh, that. In Robert's Rules of Order, there's also provisions that say that you cannot reconsider if, and there's several of them, but the ones that are relevant would be um, if there's been an affirmative vote whose provisions have been partly carried out or also any vote which has caused something to be done which is impossible to undo. So for example, if the plat had been signed and recorded, uh, that might fall under those provisions. Um, and the the other, well, no, go, go ahead. Finish. The reason I think that's important is uh, when you say that if, so, if they find something, then if you wait too long, it may be that even if you would find something, it may not be something that the council would agree to reconsider. That, that's the only reason. And what I was going to add to that was, I think what Mr. Jenkins is saying is that you would, if if the people asking for the rehearing come back and show you some kind of evidence, at that point you might consider setting it for a rehearing or making a motion to reconsider. You're not necessarily saying that you will do that, but that you would look at it at that time. Right. If three years from now they've already built a bunch of houses i don't think it would be appropriate then. well right and that would be that would be your other provision that you just said. you want to you want to leave it at that uh i would but that's for me i'm only speaking for one of the five okay <laughs> that's exactly what we've what we've all said okay uh, i'm good with that yeah yeah yeah, I'm, I'm okay. You good with that? Yeah, I'm good with that. Okay, Rose. Kiss, I'm down. Okay. I mean, Ron and I kind of feel like that. You know, the council made a a hasty and a bad vote, but. Well, well, just numbers. think if you'd have voted for it, you could have been <laughs> offering it to reconsideration at this point. <laughs> that'd have been yeah. tricky, but that would have been an option yeah. for you. Yeah. Good point. Uh, so yeah, I just want to point that out to you. Been very tricky. I dare. You know? I've been very tricky. Kind of remind me of a good friend of mine that we used to call Tricky Dick. <laughs> Nixon. <laughs> He's a good friend of mine. He's, He's a good friend. I don't know. I didn't hang with him. Much. Okay. Uh, it's been a long day. Mm. So, I believe that ends the clerk's report. Okay. <laughs> Next time, don't I? Do I get paid extra? <laughs> no. Uh, Dale, you have anything else? Uh, nothing at this time, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, I see Mr. Marvin T. Mohammed. Uh, I'd like to give him an opportunity to come forward. Marvin, you. Look mighty spiffy today. I like. Oh, thank you, you thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Anybody got a camera? He always looks <laughs> good. Why, why would you, today be any exception? Well, I mean, I, I, I like that look he has on his face. <laughs> Very business look today. No, I'm dead. I'm, 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 I'm in a, I'm in a actually great mood today. Oh, you see that? Yeah, I'm in a great yeah, I tell you, I could, I could pick that up on it. My, my son told me, see, you see what, man, you see what you started. But um, my son is taking me out to dinner tonight, so I'm, I'm you know, I feel, oh, I feel well, great. Well, excellent, excellent, Mom. You know, excellent. I can't believe it. But is he down there with you? No, he's uh, no, he's actually still at he's actually still at work right now. But okay, uh, yeah, okay. And Be you hear that, huh? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, okay. Marvin oh, Muhammad, uh, fourteen thirteen Clay Street. And I was, man, I'm kind of saddened that uh, Councilman uh, Sam Jenkins actually left out. Uh, we actually sent a couple of emails to him that uh, he, he requested that we send for several of the intersections that we want to be able to work, to work on. I don't know, did he, did he forward those, uh, those intersections over to the safety committee chairman? 
uh, Oliver Jenkins. Uh, however, uh, with that, with that, with that being said, I looked over the over the emails to actually uh, between uh, uh, Councilman Jenkins, Oliver, and Sam, and also with uh, with, uh, with Julie as well, Julie Glass as well, to see what what was the original intent with the with those thirty with those intersections in the 35, 40 mile hour zones, and I concluded. Uh, and even going back with some of the uh, discussions that I had with uh, uh, Councilman Jenkins, uh, Oliver Jenkins, and uh, the author of the of the, the ordinance, uh, Sam Jenkins, that we was we was in agreement. However, because we didn't actually put that language in the in the ordinance, uh, the Cedar Shreveport, of course, uh, Police Department, they're they're erring, you know, they're erring on the side of caution and denying us uh, access to those intersections. So we're just trying to kind of uh, attempting, trying to trying to move the, the ball, the can further down the road, if you will. Let's see what the chairman of the safety committee I, I thought say. this issue was resolved, but I need to talk to Sam about it. Mm -hmm. Because I, I think both what I got in your email and my conversation with, with Sam was that we agreed with what he presented to us at the council and then when I spoke to Sam about it he said uh, we were all set so I need to really talk to him about if there's specific action that we need to do right and I and I was on the I was on the on, I was working on the conclusion that we were all set as well uh, however uh, again the uh, three police because last week but, but because of because of the because of the part where we actually have to write down the intersections on the permit application. Uh, that's where we have an issues at. So we, right now we at a standstill. Okay. So uh, you're saying this has happened in the last week? Uh, uh, well, happened. Well, we actually been denied only once. We haven't submitted another uh, uh, application since since that last denial. Okay. I'm going to talk to him tomorrow, and one of us is going to send you an email or text tomorrow. Okay. Good when, you, when you get a permit, are they just are they good just for that day, or are they? Or are they permanent permanent permits? Uh, no, th no, they're usually uh, for maybe ninety days okay. or for or for a quarter of the, of, right. of the year, and then of course they you know they look at your activity for those ninety days or four okay. months. And well, then, these particular intersections you're referencing are are these exceed the speed limits that the, the ordinance set? Uh, well, that's that's the issue. We we're we're trying to work the thirty five mile hour zone, but they intersect forty. 40 mile hour zones. I and, thought and that's the way the ordinance was set up, that if it was intersect a, a 40, you couldn't work the 40. You said could or couldn't? Could not. Well, we put in the ordinance, uh, only thing that we put in definitive in, into the ordinance was where on the state highways, uh, the Uri Drives, the 70 Streets, the Greenwood Roads, uh, we put that in the ordinance where we couldn't work those intersections that 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 crossed those uh, we were I, I went back and personally looked at the at the conversation in the emails again through myself uh, Councilman Jenkins Oliver and Sam and then of course uh, Julie Glass and it, and it clearly uh, illustrates uh, that that the, the intent was to not to restrict us from those intersections because if you if you restrict us from those intersections then it, then we actually have in, no intersections to work at all. So we right back at ground zero. Could you uh, could you come back tomorrow when Sam? Well, I, I'll call I'll, I'll call him or send him a text. I mean, I just need to talk to Sam because he and I have talked since the first time you came. Mm -hmm. Sam was not here that time either, right. or he had left before you got up to here. Two the, weeks have elapsed. I thought we had it fixed, and then we had another council meeting. And so now we're on it again, and apparently now it's been a month and it had been fixed. So right. I, Sam and I need to just get together and make sure between what we're saying and what the police want, we got to make sure we're all on the same. Right. Page. I don't know when he said that was fixed because he actually told he actually sent me an email as well and told me we was in good shape. I didn't understand. I, I didn't. I didn't understand. Did that mean from the ordinance perspective or, or from the city police, police yeah. department? I, I but but I actually just. I actually just spoke with Assistant Chief Wayne Smith, and he gave me some clarification, and and they kind of want that gray area cl cleared up. Okay. Mm -hmm. Got and it. the reason why I'm asking you to come back tomorrow, so we can make sure that we will not have that gray area. <laughs> Maybe the chief would be here, and the 
city attorney over there, and then we had the uh, uh, chairman of the public safety committee that would be here, and, and we can just kind of make sure that we clear this up so you all can get rolling. Okay, good deal, great, thank you. All right, appreciate it. Enjoyed uh, the other night at the meeting. Uh, uh, enjoyed having you there, and, and you're exactly right. I mean, we have to make that uh, a priority because you know people are getting sick and and, and uh, from that dump, and we have to make sure that we get on top of that. Good. I'm I'm I'm, uh, I'm actually um, because your son might be one of those that inhale that smoke and and hey and, 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 and you got a respiratory problem there. Indeed, indeed, he did. He did uh, grow up in the MLK area. Uh, uh, however, however, now he's actually on campus at cent at, at Centenary. Uh, so, uh, so he's he's away from that. You want to give him one of these? Wow! <laughs> hey! <laughs> you want your son one of these? Has a respiratory problem? <laughs> he, he doesn't. He he he's actually he's very useful. I, oh, I think yeah. he's, he's I think it's going to I think it's going to be good. okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 he's never sitting there. In fact, he don't even. Right. In fact, he don't even understand the word mortality right right now at this point. <laughs> right, yeah. You don't have to worry about no dump being over there. Yeah, yeah. There you go. All right. Thank you again, and we we'll look to see you tomorrow, Marvin. Okay. Uh, any more observations, questions, comments? If not. Uh, Mr. Thompson, if it's all right with you and Dale, I'm going to call this meeting. All right with me. All right. Yeah. Meeting's adjourned. Go longer than I thought. <laughs> I'm here. No, we shouldn't. Yeah. I know. Yeah. At one point, I thought we were about to walk.